In the original work, Commander Joe's personality was quite terrible, but the reason behind it was the annihilation of his clan. But now, his parents are alive, and he has a gentle older brother. Aside from being a bit arrogant like an Uchiha, he doesn't have any other flaws in his personality. When Li Shang explained that surpassing Uchiha Itachi was possible, Sasuke became as excited and confident as if he had been injected with chicken blood. At this young age, he wouldn't consider too much or understand the difficulties involved. Li Shang didn't explain much either, knowing that he would find out next year that things weren't that simple. Naruto, don't rush the chakra refinement. Kakashi was explaining basic knowledge when he noticed Li Shang and Sasuke, so he stopped and greeted them. Let me introduce you, Uchiha Sasuke. Li Shang pointed at Sasuke and said. Oh, I know, he's the younger brother of the genius Uchiha Itachi. Kakashi's face showed a sudden realization. Although Uchiha Itachi hadn't joined the Anbu yet, his reputation was already well known. Sasuke looked at Kakashi. White hair and a mask covering his eyes, he really looked strange. Kakashi didn't know that Sasuke had labeled him as strange, so he continued to introduce Uzumaki Naruto. Hello, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto reached out his hand. Although he appeared carefree, he was actually very attentive. Sasuke gave him a different feeling. Among his peers, Naruto was the second person Sasuke had met with such unaffected eyes. The first time was that girl with the Byakugan. The one who ended up beating him. Sasuke looked left and right and realized that Naruto seemed to want to shake hands with him, not Li Shang. Sasuke. Li Shang raised his head and said, he's the same age as you. Maybe you'll be classmates next year. Sasuke immediately remembered the mission he had given him, so he held Naruto's small hand and said, behave well in the future, and I might consider making you my little brother. Work hard. Naruto's face showed a surprised expression as he asked, aren't you afraid of me? Just you? Sasuke sneered. I can handle you with just one finger. You're far from making me afraid. Don't be too full of yourself. Li Shang patted his head, what if he surpasses you? That's impossible. Sasuke answered with exceptional confidence. Li Shang looked at him as if he were a general on a stage, full of flags. But Naruto didn't mind. He looked at Sasuke with a smile, clearly very happy. Kakashi, I brought him here for something. Li Shang returned to the main topic. I've been busy lately, and Sasuke needs a teacher. He's very talented in fire style and lightning style, and after thinking it over, you're the most suitable in all of Konoha. Kakashi was clearly surprised. He quickly waved his hand and said, You really think highly of me. His brother alone wouldn't be worse than me. You know, he doesn't have time. Li Shang gave him a meaningful look. Kakashi thought about what had happened today and understood what he meant. I'll do my best to teach him. Thank you. Li Shang patted Sasuke's head and said, Call him Sensei. I haven't decided yet. Sasuke puffed up his cheeks and said, Let's see if he's capable. Kakashi couldn't help but laugh at his reaction. This guy is really cute, and his personality reminds him a bit of Obito. It seems like I'll have to show you. The first technician of Konoha isn't just a name. Kakashi raised his right hand. In the next moment, lightning flickered, and countless bird cries filled the air. Sasuke couldn't help but widen his eyes, so strong, and so cool. If he were to demonstrate this to his father and brother, they would definitely be amazed. Sensei, I want to learn this, Sasuke immediately betrayed his previous statement. Li Shang shook his head and bid them farewell. He didn't lie, he really had a lot of things to do. Tian Shang Ren Jian has already entered the right track. In the beginning, he went to the fire country because he was attracted by the name of the Pinru Business Association and made a deal with their boss. Li Shang became their consultant, guiding them in their development direction. Of course, in return, he wanted a 30% profit. He wasn't afraid of them going back on their word. In this ninja world, strength is ultimately respected. When the time comes, not only will he not give them 70%, he won't even give them 10%. But fortunately, the Pinru Business Association has always been very obedient and well behaved. Previously, he didn't have the opportunity to go to the Fire Country's metropolis to get money. Now that they have come over, it's much more convenient. He plans to make a ring for each member of the Tendo, using the material of chakra weapons. This thing is relatively expensive, but there are advantages to its high price, it is very sturdy and basically won't get damaged. In addition to this, he wants to start a second company. The positioning will be media and entertainment. There are TVs and movies in the ninja world, but there has never been a media conglomerate. 
What Li Shang wants to do is to make money and control public opinion, or in other words, have the power of speech. In his previous life, he deeply understood the terrifying nature of public opinion, real killing without blinking. The next day, Li Shang was awakened by Shisui again. Itachi, you're back. He opened the door and saw Uchiha Itachi, who had been missing for over a week. This is my report on the Leaf Village inspection. Uchiha Itachi took out a thick stack of documents. Li Shang estimated that it was about 10 centimeters thick. He tugged at the corner of his mouth. Isn't this a bit too much? After dealing with Donzo's affairs, we can discuss it in detail. Li Shang put away the documents and said, Let's go to the Hokage Tower. After a while, they arrived at the conference room. Dozens of pairs of eyes turned towards them. Most of them were clan heads, except for the three of them. I invited them to come. Sarutobi Hirazan raised his hand and said, Now that everyone is here, the meeting can officially begin. Hokage sama, are we missing two Hokage advisors? It doesn't matter. Sarutobi Hirazan smiled indifferently, I didn't ask them to come. As smart as Nara Shikaku, as the Hokage's strategist and Shikamaru's father, he was always very keen. Don't speak out of turn. Nara Shikaku reminded his two companions, Akamichi Choza and Yamanaka Inoichi, who were on his left and right. The three families, Ino Shika Cho, always helped each other. The only reason I called everyone here is for one thing. Serutobi Hirazin's face turned serious, root in its leader, Shimura Danzo. Many people looked at each other when they heard this name. Even if they were stupid, they had a sense of foreboding at this moment. Hayuga Hiyashi suddenly raised his hand to cover his right eye. Byakugan activated. His body trembled. Serutobi Hirazin still had traces of the Sharingan. Thinking of his conversation with Li Shang, he couldn't help but be astonished. The Uchiha clan's Sharingan was indeed powerful, but it couldn't possibly control Serutobi Hirazan. After all, this Hokage's strength could rank in the top three in Konoha, maybe even the first. Shimura Danzo, guilty of heinous crimes, deserves to die. Serutobi Hirazan's voice was imposing, R.O., it's your turn to read out his deeds. The conference room fell silent. They suspected that their ears were playing tricks on them. Although Serutobi Hirazan and Shimura Danzo had friction between them, everyone knew that they had a close relationship. What's going on now? Under the shocked expressions of Nara Shikaku and others, Li Shang walked to the front and took out a scroll. Bosses, starting tomorrow, we will test the waters. It's time to decide life and death. Please make sure to keep reading. Oops, I just saw the notification and forgot that the old book also has this investment thing. After months of investigation by the Konoha Police Department, we have finally obtained a series of incriminating evidence against Root and Shimura Danzo, fulfilling the expectations of Hokage Sama, Li Shang said, imitating Serutobi Hirazan's polite opening remarks while shifting blame. Uchiha attacked Danzo only because it was ordered by Hokage. This is not a personal vendetta. Obviously, the clan heads were skeptical upon hearing this statement. But being able to become clan heads, they were all intelligent enough. Today's situation was beyond their control, so they decided to remain silent and be serious listeners. However, as Li Shang recited Donzo's ten crimes, their expressions became increasingly shocked. Just the first one alone could be considered a capital offense. Illegally researching wood style with Orochimaru, resulting in the deaths of sixty infants. Li Shang had a small doubt from his previous life. If Serutobi Hirazan considered Orochimaru a rogue ninja because of his wood style experiments, why didn't he deal with Danzo? Didn't he know? Even if he didn't know before, he should have understood after seeing Yamato. So, Serutobi Hirazan completely failed to practice what he preached. His verbal commitment to the will of fire sounded good, but in reality, he deviated from it. The second charge was from five years ago, the Night of the Nine Tales. Danzo and Root imprisoned the Uchiha clan without any evidence, causing them to lose the best opportunity to rescue fourth Hokage Namikaze Minato. Hayuga Hiyashi and the others didn't know how to react. The clan heads present had all experienced the chaos caused by the Nine Tails and had heard about this incident. But now, as Li Shang spoke, they began to understand. Because of the imprisonment of the Uchiha, neither Root nor Danzo participated in the rescue. If this hadn't happened, the fourth Hokage could have received assistance from Root and the Uchiha, and perhaps he wouldn't have died. Thinking about this, many of them felt regret. It was such a waste for a ninja like the fourth Hokage to die. The remaining charges were somewhat more normal. They were about the experiments conducted by Root in recent years, 
all of which were prohibited by Konoha. For ordinary ninjas, even one charge would be a capital offense. But Danzo had participated in all of them. In the end, the dozen or so clan heads in the meeting room reached a consensus that Danzo was indeed not worth sparing. As Jonin, they had also killed many people, but they were all enemy ninjas. They wouldn't kill innocent people, let alone infants. Only extremely wicked people would harm infants. The tenth and final charge, Li Shang looked up at the three clan heads of Ino Shika Cho, and seeing their inexplicable expressions, he said, Danzo's harm to the genius ninjas of each clan. Once this statement was made, the meeting room fell silent again. It was well known that joining Root depended entirely on Danzo's selection. And his criteria naturally focused on talent. Almost all young ninja with talent came from the major ninja clans. There weren't many commoners, this was also normal. The ninja clans possessed excellent legacies, such as secret techniques and bloodline limits, which were difficult for common ninja to attain. From the current situation in Root, it could be seen that the capable ones mostly came from the Yamanaka clan, Aburame clan, Nara clan, and so on. The Hyuga clan escaped because of the caged bird. As for the Uchiha clan, Danzo wanted them, but Hokage didn't allow it, so he couldn't force it. Ahem, a certain green-skinned, tight-suited weirdo volunteered to join but was rejected by Danzo. It's not that guy's strength was insufficient, after all, he almost kicked off the grand finale. It was his personality that even Danzo was afraid of. If he joined Root, it wouldn't take long for the style to become very strange. Except for the Hyuga and Uchiha clans, the other ninja clans had no way to refuse Danzo and Root. But to join the Root, one must undergo terrifying training and brainwashing. This has also created a situation where they only know Danzo, but not their own clan. It's like hitting a dog with a meat bun, once gone, never to return. Moreover, Danzo only targets the top talents of their ninja clan, and the mortality rate is also the highest. The clan leaders have long been dissatisfied with Danzo's domineering behavior, but they dare not speak up. Li Shang couldn't help but smile. Although many people hide it well, he still perceives their true emotions that appear instantly. Disgust, dissatisfaction, and helplessness. Because in the past, Danzo not only had the root, but also had the secret support of Serutobi Hiruzen. Unless they want to rebel, they can only reluctantly send out their own talents. This kind of reaction is exactly what Li Shang wants. The Uchiha clan's reputation is not good, but Danzo's is even worse. There is a saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Now that the Uchiha clan wants to kill Danzo and disband the root, they will inevitably have to bear the consequences. Hokage-sama. Li Shang rolled up the scroll, bowed slightly, and said, Shimura Danzo and the Root have seriously violated the rules of Konoha and the principles of a ninja. As a member of the Konoha police force, please allow us to fulfill our duties, strike down the criminals, maintain the safety of the villagers, and bring prosperity to Konoha. This speech was righteous and flawless. Uchiha Fugaku remembered what he said yesterday, and when he compared it, he felt completely inferior. He is truly a born conspirator, permission granted. Serutobi Hiruzen took out his hand order and handed it to Uchiha Fugaku, saying, I trouble the Konoha police force to handle this matter. Wait. Hokage-sama, I have a suggestion. Li Shang raised his hand and said, Most of the members of the route were coerced by Danzo and can only be considered as accomplices. I hope that the clan leaders can take them back and educate them properly. If they can reform in the future, it would be a good thing. Nara Shikaku's eyes lit up. With his intelligence, he naturally understood the implied meaning behind Li Zhang's words. But he had to show his gratitude. Hokage-sama, I think what Lang said is right. I hope we can give them a chance. After Nara Shikaku, Yamanaka Inoichi, Akamichi Choza, and others also stood up and agreed. Since everyone says so, then leave this matter to you to resolve. Serutobi Hiruzen smiled and said. After the meeting, the clan leaders returned home to gather their forces. Although the main target was the Uchiha clan, since they were accepting the talents from within the clan, they couldn't just sit idle. At the very least, they should act as cheerleaders and provide support. Under normal circumstances, they wouldn't dare to do so. But now, Danzo and the Root are like meat on a chopping board, waiting to be slaughtered. No matter how powerful they are, they can't be a match for the entire Konoha. Lang. Shisui said with admiration, you are truly a genius. With just one meeting, all the ninja clans stood on the side of the Uchiha clan. It's truly a brilliant move. They are not helping the Uchiha, but helping their own interests. 
Li Shang understood this clearly. To change the Uchiha clan's reputation, a single meeting is far from enough. But it's already very impressive. Uchiha Itachi also praised, unmatched among peers. Hey, when did you learn to flatter? Li Shang waved his hand, let's hurry and take action, so that Danzo doesn't get wind of it and run away. During the clan leader meeting convened by Serutobi Hirazan, Danzo had already received intelligence. Root, an organization with a more brutal system than the Anbu. Under this immense pressure, Root became the strongest institution in Konoha. What Serutobi Hirazan didn't know, he knew. The people Serutobi Hirazan didn't dare to kill, he dared to kill. This is him, the Root of Konoha, Shimura Danzo. The clan leader meeting, it could be big or small. Danzo had already gotten used to Serutobi Hirazan not inviting him to the meetings. These little tricks meant nothing to him, as he would find out the specific contents after the meeting ended. Today feels slower than usual, is it because there's more content in the meeting? In the dimly lit hall of Root, Danzo frowned slightly. What he didn't know was that all the messengers of Root were controlled by the Hyuga clan. Under the power of the Byakugan, it was impossible to hide anything in Root unless everyone there was a cage level ninja. Hyuga Hiyashi was willing to help not only because of Serutobi Hirazan's orders, but also because of Li Zhang's promise. After the clan leader meeting, Hyuga Hiyashi had completely understood that Li Shang was not an ordinary person, but a destined dragon that would soar. Li Shang was also feeling troubled at this moment. Being pulled aside by the clan leaders one after another, and even having many people ask him if he wanted a wife. It made him feel like he was back in his previous life, facing the terrifying scene of dealing with numerous relatives during Chinese New Year. He really wanted to say loudly, please show some respect to Danzo. So this is Ro's weakness. Shisui couldn't help but smile. Seeing Li Shang, who had always been calm and confident, in such a distressed expression was truly a rare sight. The Uchiha haven't made such a big splash in a long time. Uchiha Fugaku and Shisui had completely different thoughts. Since the Night of the Nine Tales, their Uchiha clan had been imprisoned in Konoha, as if they were in jail. Although Shisui and Itachi were very famous, they were completely different from Li Shang. Strength could make people fear, but wisdom could make people convinced. However, Li Zhang's strength was indeed a problem. Uchiha Fugaku didn't quite understand why he still hadn't awakened his eyes. Not to mention the Mangekio Sharingan, he didn't even have the regular Sharingan. Was it because he hadn't experienced any stimulation? Uchiha Fugaku recalled his own process of awakening his eyes and couldn't help but sigh. As they approached Root, everyone stopped talking. Uchiha Fugaku commanded the ninjas of his clan to surround the Root base. But they were eventually detected by Root. What did you say? Danzo looked at his trusted subordinate, Yamanaka Kazuha, and couldn't help but ask again. Uchiha Fugaku, Hayuga Hiyashi, and more than ten other clan leaders have come to visit. Yamanaka Kazuha answered respectfully. In the original work, he was Danzo's bodyguard when Danzo served as the acting Hokage, which showed his status. What's going on? Danzo felt puzzled, but he wasn't too worried. With the decades-long friendship between him and Serutobi Hirazan, he couldn't believe that these clan leaders would act against him. But such visits had never happened before. Gather the members of Root to protect secretly. Danzo waved his hand and said, As the headquarters of Root, there were dozens of elite ninjas here. Even if the clan leaders were to make a move, he was confident that he could escape with his own strength. But such a thing was obviously impossible. Danzo walked out of the gate. A row of root ninjas immediately followed behind him. He looked at the many clan leaders and asked calmly, what's the matter? No one answered. Danzo felt a hint of anger rising in his heart. Even Serutobi Hirazan didn't dare to ignore me, so who do you think you are? But everyone present was a clan leader, so he couldn't just lose his temper. What? Are all the clan leaders here to visit my root? A hint of dissatisfaction could be heard in their words. Lang, you speak. Uchiha Fugaku glanced at the others and found that they all had the same thoughts. Li Shang shrugged and said, So you still need a junior to deliver the message? He took a few steps forward and said, The Konoha Police Department is here on the orders of Hokage Sama to capture Shimura Danzo. You're talking nonsense. Danzo couldn't help but curse. How could Hokage give such an order? I think you're deceiving everyone and living recklessly. Li Shang shook his head and said, Shisui, take off his bandages. Shisui, who was close to achieving the ultimate, had already disappeared as soon as Li Shang finished speaking. 
Danzo didn't even have time to react before he felt the restraints on him loosen, revealing his arm and the Sharingan on it. At this time, the Uchiha clan had not been annihilated, so there was no shortage of Sharingan, only two. No one knew whose unlucky eyes they were. This is indeed the first Hokage's cells, with vitality surging like the ocean. Akamichi Dingzo couldn't help but speak up. Their Akamichi clan's secret technique was related to the body's yang release, so when the seal on the bandages was released, he was the first to notice. Not only him, but Hayuga Hiyashi and others could also sense it, just a second too late. And Uchiha Fugaku's expression was even more grim than theirs. Danzo had actually transplanted their Uchiha's Sharingan. This was simply unforgivable. Everyone, the evidence is conclusive, I don't need to say more unnecessary words. Li Shang spread his hands and said, kill him. Danzo's eyes instantly turned bloodshot. Exposing the Sharingan and Hashirama's cells meant something, and he knew it very well. It's over. It's all over. You bastard. I'll kill you. Danzo looked at Li Shang, his face filled with crazy killing intent. He reached out his arm, his muscles wriggled, and countless vines shot out like arrows. It's wood style. Except for Uchiha Fugaku and Shisui, who knew the news in advance, the others all showed shocked expressions. They knew that Danzo had transplanted Hashirama's cells, but they didn't know that it would allow him to master wood style. And the reputation of wood style was well known in the ninja world. Li Shang, on the other hand, didn't care at all. In terms of wood style proficiency, Danzo was still no match for Yamato. The only troublesome thing was Izanagi, but he didn't care, Uchiha Fugaku and others didn't dare to be negligent. In an instant, a sea of fire appeared in front of Li Shang. Because there were too many fire style ninjutsu mixed together. But it also proved Li Zhang's position in the Uchiha clan. Without a doubt, he was the first clan member to be recognized without relying on strength. Li Shang raised an eyebrow, he was prepared. In fact, the one here was just a clone. Shisui, control him for me. Li Shang shouted. Shisui, without hesitation, activated his Mangekyo Sharingan. He instantly appeared in front of Danzo. Danzo subconsciously glanced at him. The world suddenly turned pitch black. When he looked down, he saw his body filled with wooden wedges, and an unbearable pain surged up. Danzo was greatly shocked. Just one glance and he fell into a genjutsu. He quickly activated the Sharingan on his arm. Based on his understanding of the Uchiha, he knew that only Sharingan could deal with Sharingan. But it was useless. In the moment he was stunned, Li Shang drew his sword and calmly cut it down. Blood splattered. Danzo's right hand of the king fell to the ground. Ah, ah, ah. My right hand. Danzo held onto his severed arm, the sudden pain and the uniqueness of his right hand making him furious. But soon, he displayed the qualities expected of a ninja and stopped shouting. I want to see Serutobi Hirazan. Danzo was still trapped in the genjutsu, the double pain making his face turn pale. Shisui's eyes were definitely not ordinary Sharingan. He recalled something from a long time ago and suddenly felt a chill, realizing what kind of eyes they were. The ones Senju Tobarama had mentioned, the evil Uchiha. Danzo unconsciously uttered his teacher's catchphrase, then shouted, Serutobi Hirazan, come out. Otherwise, you will regret it. If Serutobi Hirazan wanted to kill him, he would definitely come in person. But there was no response. A sense of panic and regret arose in Danzo's heart. Panic because it was possible that he might actually die, and regret because he had been careless and hadn't anticipated the ambush of the two young men, which resulted in him not using Izanagi in advance. Now that his right arm had been cut off, he no longer had the Sharingan and couldn't use Izanagi anymore. How could this be so coincidental? He suddenly had a feeling of being completely exposed. Serutobi Hirazan, if you have the ability to kill me, then come out. Danzo shouted with all his strength, his only hope was to see Serutobi Hirazan again. As long as he was willing to talk to him, he would have a way out. I have to remind you, Li Zhang's voice sounded in the darkness, the things you say in the genjutsu cannot be heard outside. Danzo's body trembled. No. Li Shang felt that there should be a BGM of Yi Jian Mei at this moment. Then Serutobi Hirazan would jump out and say, Don't contact me anymore, I'm afraid the Uchiha will misunderstand. He shivered and shook off the strange association, and the katana beheaded him. It was a bit too easy, Li Shang said with some emotion as he retracted his long sword. Although every time a time traveler arrived at Hokage, they had to kill Danzo to liven things up, he was probably the easiest. 
Shisui heard this and couldn't help but smile. Easy. Actually, it wasn't easy. His Mangekio Sharingan was obtained at a great cost. I think you should consider how to awaken your eyes, Shisui suggested. Your strength is your only weakness, and I can't be with you all the time. Awaken my eyes. Li Shang looked at the root ninja who was still resisting, then glanced at Uchiha Itachi and said, Regarding awakening the eyes, I have an idea. If everything goes smoothly, perhaps the Uchiha will no longer suffer because of awakening their eyes. Shisui couldn't help but be taken aback. He instinctively asked, Is that possible? I'm not doubting you, but that statement is too astonishing. Li Shang understood his thoughts and could only say that the Uchiha's understanding of the Mangekyo Sharingan was not as good as Senju Tobarama's. He patted Shisui's shoulder and said, Just wait and see. I'll wait and see. Shisui took a deep breath and suppressed his curiosity. As a clan member who loved the Uchiha, he didn't want to see the tragedies caused by awakening the eyes. So whether it was him or Uchiha Fugaku, they never dared to reveal how they awakened their Mangekyo Sharingan. Not to mention whether it was applicable to others, but in order to obtain powerful strength, some people would definitely try to kill their parents and friends. It seems like he's really dead. Li Shang had been waiting for Donzo's corpse to transform, but there was still no sign of resurrection after the battle with Root. Uchiha Madara could delay his resurrection with Izanagi, and it seemed like Danzo could too. It's just that he remembered Obito's was three minutes, while Danzo seemed to be measured in seconds. It had been so long, if he had used Izanagi, he would have come back to life long ago. Li Shang suddenly thought that the current Danzo might not be able to use Izanagi because he had nowhere to learn it. I wonder whose eyes these are. Uchiha Fugaku used a glass bottle to soak the eyes on Danzo's right arm. Which Uchiha clan member has a close relationship with him? Li Shang asked in response. Shisui's expression immediately froze. Uchiha Fugaku sighed and said, only his teammate, Uchiha Kagami. Shisui is a descendant of Uchiha Kagami. He remembered his past admiration for Danzo and couldn't help but show a regretful expression. The past is in the past and doesn't need to be dwelled upon, Li Shang comforted. Regardless of whether it was Lord Mirror's decision, you have already avenged him with your own hands. After they finished their conversation, Nara Shikaku and others approached. Chief Fugaku, Nara Shikaku said gratefully, the members of the route have been brought back by us. We leave the rest of the cleanup work to you. Uchiha Fugaku smiled and said, That is the responsibility of our Leaf Police Department. Truly, he was the smartest ninja. After years of operation, the root had accumulated numerous secrets and wealth. By handling the aftermath, it meant that the other ninja clans wouldn't take a single penny. For the Uchiha, who had been in conflict for many years, it was undoubtedly a windfall. Lang, come visit the Nara clan when you have time. Nara Shikaku specifically greeted Li Shang before leaving. Not only him, but also Akamichi Choza and Yamanaka Inoichi. The Ino Shika Cho trio always moved together. Too bad my daughter is only five years old, Yamanaka Inoichi suddenly had a realization. I forgot that Lang is only ten. How about you come for a marriage proposal in a few years? Li Shang knew he was joking, but still wanted to retort. This was too cruel. But his daughter Ino would indeed be beautiful when she grew up. But she wasn't his type. Lang, you're really popular, Shisui stifled a laugh and said. In fact, he and Itachi had similar experiences. But it was all within the clan. If we have time to chat, we might as well go do some work, Li Shang said with a helpless expression, waving his hand. Oh, right, if there are any relevant documents about the second Hokage, give them to me. Haha, <laughs> no problem, Shisui laughed and then disappeared. Tisk. Shisui's body flicker is really fast. Li Shang couldn't be bothered to search the house and took out the assignment handed over by Uchiha Itachi to review. He barely finished reading it by nightfall. How is it? Oh, Itachi, when did you get here? Just now, we finished cleaning up the roots inheritance. What did you gain? A lot, enough to ensure the Uchiha won't have to worry about food and drink for several years. It seems like this bloodshed was profitable. Li Shang patted his assignment and said, This report is very detailed and well done but it lacks some critical thinking. Luckily, I have a few questions. Go ahead. Uchiha Itachi immediately became serious. The ordinary residents of Konoha are very vulnerable, right? Li Zhang's first question caught Uchiha Itachi off guard. Yes, he said, compared to ninjas, they are too fragile. Natural disasters and man-made calamities can easily destroy them, so we need to protect them. Why do we need to protect them? Li Shang looked at him and asked, 
Ninjas are incredibly powerful, and they are just burdens. Why do you say we need to protect them? You can protect your own family, but why protect strangers? Uchiha Itachi stood frozen in place. This question once again caught him off guard, leaving him somewhat at a loss. Thanks to the generous support from the Lord of Firepower. Peas, it's a new week, so all the lords, please give some recommendation votes. Uchiha Itachi pondered for a moment and said, because they are residents of Konoha, and I am a shinobi of Konoha. A loving family of Konoha, huh? Li Shang showed no surprise. Uchiha Itachi's current thinking still revolved around the will of fire. The will of fire does indeed have its merits. But slogans alone won't achieve anything. Just like Uchiha Itachi now, embodying the will of fire means protecting Konoha. And doing so in his own way, such as annihilating his clan as seen in the original work. He didn't know how to make Konoha prosper, nor did he know how to truly reconcile the major shinobi clans of Konoha. Protection alone is meaningless, Li Shang asked, have you seen their vulnerability? Have you seen their strength? Strength? None, Uchiha Itachi shook his head, speaking the truth. This world was created by them, not by shinobi, Li Shang paused and said, they are the true masters, and what you need to do is lead them and fully unleash their power. In Marvel, there is a classic saying, with great power comes great responsibility. Shinobi are like superhumans, and using their abilities solely for fighting is the biggest waste. Lead? Are the Hokage leading them? Uchiha Itachi quickly responded. Barely, but Serutobi Hiruzen and Shimura Danzo have lost their original intentions, which is the will of fire, Li Shang asked again, do you know why they need to be led? Because their individual strength is relatively weak, Uchiha Itachi pondered and said, so they need us to lead them. You're smart. Unity is strength, and a group is always stronger than an individual. Li Shang changed the topic, but that's not what I want to say. The real reason is their blind obedience. Knowledge determines one's perspective. The residents of Konoha have hardly received any education, so naturally, they can't understand things very well. Uzumaki Naruto is called a demon fox because of the inaction of the Hokage and the conformity of the Konoha residents. They have lost their ability to think. In the absence of education, Li Shang can only lead them. And in a ninja world with superhuman powers, shinobi are undoubtedly the most suitable. Just like in the movie, Let the Bullets Fly, Zhang Mazi mobilized the entire city's people with great effort and ultimately achieved victory. As long as there is one person, even if it's an ordinary person, as long as they have an unwavering determination, they are a spark of hope. And that's what Li Shang hopes for, he came to this world and must leave something behind. Blind obedience. Uchiha Itachi suddenly had a flash of insight. As if a door had opened, he had a feeling of sudden enlightenment. He understood what Li Shang meant by leading. This is the same principle as the will of fire advocating no barriers between clans and no conflicts between individuals. But the requirements for shinobi are higher. What should I do? Uchiha Itachi took a deep breath, looking at Li Shang with eyes full of anticipation and thirst for knowledge. Just like when he met Shisui in his confusion and took the will of fire as the direction of his life. At this moment, he felt like he had found a treasure. That's a long story, Li Shang glanced at the sky and said, let's go eat first. We can't save the world on an empty stomach. Shisui also walked over and handed him some documents, saying, here's what you wanted. He didn't interrupt earlier when he saw the two of them engrossed in conversation. Li Shang put away the documents, stretched lazily, and said, today deserves a feast. Shisui smiled and said, seems like you guys had a great conversation. Because I saw hope. Li Shang blinked her eyes, it's what I told you before. The three of them finished eating barbecue. Shisui quickly left. Many things regarding the Uchiha clan needed to be handled by him. Come. Follow me into the house. Li Shang pulled Uchiha Itachi, preparing for a late night conversation. And the first lesson is how to control public opinion, how to guide the residents of Konoha. Newspapers, television, radio broadcasts, movies, and so on, would open Uchiha Itachi's eyes. He never knew there was so much knowledge in these things. Actually, what Li Shang said wasn't that great, after all, she was just a high school student. But for the undeveloped ninja world, it was already mind blowing. Yo! I'll leave the establishment of the company to you. Li Shang waved her hand and went to Uchiha Fugaku's residence. After a night of studying, Uchiha Itachi had already grown. He was too lazy to bother with trivial matters like starting a company. Teacher. Li Shang knocked on the door and entered. 
Have some tea. Uchiha Fugaku had received a report earlier, so he wasn't surprised. He poured a cup of tea and handed it to Li Shang. Call Shisui over. Last night, when I was reviewing the route's information about the second Hokage, I discovered something. Li Shang held the teacup and said. Uchiha Fugaku immediately had someone notify Shisui. A few minutes later, Shisui appeared. The second Hokage, Senju Tobarama, spent a lot of time researching the Sharingan. Li Shang took a sip of tea and went straight to the point, he already knows how to awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. What? Uchiha Fugaku couldn't help but be shocked. Senju Tobarama was indeed amazing, but as an outsider, it was unbelievable that he could figure out their Uchiha clan's supreme eye technique. The awakening of the Mangekyo Sharingan requires a strong emotional stimulus. Li Shang looked at the two of them and said, Have you witnessed the death of your loved ones or close friends? Uchiha Fugaku and Shisui glanced at each other, both seeing the incredulity in each other's eyes. It proved that what Li Shang said was true. The second Hokage is truly. Uchiha Fugaku was momentarily unsure how to evaluate him. But does it have to be negative emotions? Li Shang shook her head and said, I believe positive emotions can also awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. It's too difficult. Shisui couldn't help but smile bitterly, positive joy is too fleeting, while negative emotions can persist. You're right. Male pleasure, female love, family happiness, promotion and wealth, they are all temporary. Li Shang said seriously, but there is one positive emotion that is permanent. It possesses infinite power, transcending low-level pleasures. It can make a person go from ordinary to great, and it can give a person an unwavering steel ambition until death. What is it? Shisui widened his eyes. Uchiha Fugaku also looked at him curiously. World peace. The two of them were a bit confused by the answer. I plan to implement it on Yo, so you can wait and see. Li Shang didn't explain further. The Mangekyo Sharingan is a reflection of the soul. Emotions originate from the soul. And a person with unimaginable conviction will have a soul as solid as a rock. Li Shang was still not completely at ease with Uchiha Itachi. But if he could awaken it because of this, he would never commit the act of annihilating the clan again. And the Uchiha clan members behind him would also become the most steadfast revolutionaries, the Heavenly Drive warriors. Learning is a long and persistent process, and so is change. Uchiha Itachi knew that achieving Li Zhang's goal was not something that could be done quickly. And the change in Konoha also needed to be carefully planned. If it was too drastic, it would definitely attract attention from others. Li Shang didn't want to be as rough as Obito, even if he didn't have the Byakugan, he would still be suspected by others. But he could understand Obito's desire for revenge. The culprit behind the death of Haruno Rin was Kirigakure, who had given her the tailed beast. Since Obito had control over the Mizukage, he couldn't help but vent his anger. Ever since he believed in the infinite Tsukuyomi, his mindset had changed. In Li Zhang's words, it was like playing a game. He had already failed in achieving the first goal and wanted to quickly overturn it and open the second goal. During this process, whoever tried to stop him would be killed. For example, his teacher Minato, his clan members. But the infinite Tsukuyomi was not a simulator, there was no chance to start over. In short, he was a foolish and evil teenager with a love-sick and Chunibyo brain. Not bad. Li Shang observed his surroundings. Although the set was relatively simple, with a fake mountain pool in the middle and two rows of wooden houses on both sides, it was a suitable base for the new company. He even thought about moving Tenjuan over here. But considering that they would inevitably expand in the future, this plan became meaningless. They might even change locations. What should we name our company? Uchiha Itachi asked beside him, that's a good question. Li Shang really had no idea. In his previous life, he had difficulty coming up with names. He could spend half an hour just naming a character in a game. Calling it Tionk would be too obvious. After all, it was a secret organization. The simplest would be Konoha Entertainment. But he didn't want to limit it to just Konoha, he wanted to promote it throughout the entire ninja world. Suddenly, Li Shang had a flash of inspiration and thought of a meaningful name. Let's call it the Three Musketeers. Uchiha Itachi immediately associated it with himself, Shisui, and Li Shang. He nodded involuntarily. Our slogan will be, All for One, One for All. This phrase came from Alexander Dumas, the Three Musketeers, and its other name was, The Three Musketeers. After Li Shang finished speaking, Uchiha Itachi fell into silence. He suddenly thought of the question from yesterday, why protect strangers? 
And this slogan seemed to be a perfect answer. Only when you are willing to help others will you receive help from others one day. A very simple truth. What's wrong? Seeing him in a daze, Li Shang couldn't help but ask, has our Uchiha genius had another revelation? I can't be considered a genius in front of you. Uchiha Itachi snapped out of his thoughts and asked, there's been a question weighing on my mind for a long time. Why do you know so much? Read more books and look less at pretty Uchiha's. Uchiha Itachi suddenly wanted to complain. What on earth was this? By the way, speaking of this, there's something I need you to do. Li Shang changed the topic, as he couldn't explain further. What is it? You need to select seven Uchiha clan members for me, three females and four males. All right, I will choose seven powerful Uchiha's for you. Uchiha Itachi thought he was going to form a core group. No, I don't need them to be powerful. I only have one requirement. The females should be beautiful, and the males should be handsome. Li Shang waved his hand and said. Uchiha Itachi was shocked, thinking about what he had just said about pretty Uchiha's. He hesitated for a moment and advised, Lang, you're only ten years old. It's not the time for indulgence, especially for boys. Ah? Li Shang widened his eyes, I exclaimed in my mind. Could it be that he's possessed by Jiraiya? Or is it so easy to misunderstand what I just said? Although I know there's a saying, after fighting for a lifetime, can't one enjoy some pleasure? But our career is just starting, I wouldn't do such a thing, and I like girls. Then why are you here? Uchiha Itachi understood that he had misunderstood, but he didn't think it was his fault. We are an entertainment company, we must have celebrities to support the scene. Li Shang said naturally, but I'm worried that they don't know how to be celebrities. Uchiha Itachi thought they were going to invite existing celebrities from outside, but he didn't expect Li Shang to choose from within the Uchiha clan. I will teach them, and this is an opportunity to change the Uchiha's reputation. Li Shang patted his shoulder with emotion and said, You don't know how crazy the star chasing clan is. Although Uchiha Itachi felt a bit strange, he still chose to believe. Do you want to give it a try? To save the Uchiha and debut as an idol? Li Shang smiled and looked him up and down, saying, Both your appearance and temperament are very suitable for the cool and aloof male god style. Uchiha Itachi subconsciously took a step back. Ha ha ha. Li Shang couldn't help but laugh out loud. This move is like a god descending to earth. Look at how I made the famous toad god retreat with just one sentence. Uchiha Itachi didn't know what to say. If it weren't for Li Zhang's previous miraculous performance, he would have suspected that this guy had some serious illness. A secret room in Kirigakure. Obito, there's something you'll definitely be interested in. White Zetsu emerged from the ground and said, The Uchiha clan killed Shimura Danzo. Oh? The Uchiha finally couldn't resist rebelling? Although Obito was in Kirigakure, he had been keeping an eye on the Uchiha. He knew very well how bad their situation was now. After all, he was one of the main culprits, no. White Zetsu showed a cheerful smile. You would never guess what happened. It was Serutobi Hiruzen who ordered the Uchiha to take action. That's impossible. Obito answered without hesitation. But that's the truth, so it's quite interesting, isn't it? It seems that there must be something we don't know. Obito narrowed his eyes. The first thing he thought of was the Mangekyo Sharingan. Because what he did in Kirigakure was controlling the Mizukage. If the Uchiha had obtained the Mangekyo Sharingan, everything could be explained. How did Danzo die? Obito pondered and asked. He was controlled by Uchiha Shisui, and then Uchiha Lang cut off his head, all within three seconds. It's the Mangekyo Sharingan. Obito said firmly, Shisui must have activated the Mangekyo Sharingan. Shisui's reputation had long spread throughout the ninja world. And he earned that title during the battle with Kirigakure. It made sense for someone with his talent to activate the Mangekyo Sharingan. After thinking for a moment, Obito planned to visit Konoha. He was well aware of the power of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Because of this, he thought he could try to recruit Shisui into the Akatsuki organization. Since Shisui dared to control the Hokage, he must be ambitious, which made Obito very curious. Even if they couldn't cooperate, he could still test his eye technique. After all, the Akatsuki organization was destined to be enemies with the whole world. Konoha's third training ground. I've made it clear, you're not my match, Sasuke said, looking at Naruto, who was full of fighting spirit, feeling speechless. This guy challenges him at least three times every day. It's really annoying. This time, there won't be any problem, Naruto exclaimed, excitedly. 
In contrast to Sasuke's despondency, Naruto was thrilled. Originally alone and disliked by everyone, he had a very powerful teacher for the first time and made friends his age. The combination of these two happy things made him feel like he was in a dream. His original personality was carefree and unwilling to lose. In his eyes, sparring with Sasuke was more like playing around between friends. He really liked this kind of pattern. But Sasuke wasn't satisfied because Naruto was too weak, and fighting him was not interesting at all. And what was most annoying was that this guy didn't recognize him as the leader. It was like dying before achieving victory. They hadn't even entered the ninja school yet, and he couldn't handle a little brat. How could he face Uchiha Ro? In today's Konoha, Uchiha Ro and Uchiha Itachi were flourishing. In Sasuke's mind, he had long regarded them as his life goals. All right, let me shatter the illusion you shouldn't have, Sasuke said, not using ninjutsu because he felt it was too much of a bully against Naruto. His body disappeared, and in the next instant, he raised his leg, delivering a chilling kick. In theory, Naruto wouldn't be able to block it. But he extended his arm and used his elbow to catch the kick perfectly. Naruto grunted, the tremendous force causing his right arm to momentarily go numb. Sasuke wasn't particularly surprised. After all, they had been fighting for half a month and knew each other inside out. He had long discovered that Naruto's physical qualities were extraordinary. He had endurance and quick reflexes. You still have a long way to go, Sasuke said disdainfully. He heard this phrase from Li Zhang's mouth, he liked it a lot and it had become his catchphrase. As soon as he finished speaking, Sasuke used Naruto's right arm as leverage and flew to his head, his legs like scissors clamping down on his head, directly pinning him to the ground. Call me leader. I won't. Naruto struggled violently, but it was in vain. He was only slightly better than Sasuke in terms of physical qualities. The rest of the gap was quite large. Kakashi looked at Sasuke riding on Naruto's body and couldn't help but smile. He thought of his two teammates, it was just that Sasuke's personality was a bit problematic. Too obsessed with being the leader, Kakashi glanced at the sky. A clear blue sky, it was good weather for going out. He called Sasuke and Naruto, bought two bunches of flowers at the flower shop, and came to the memorial stone. I used to not understand the importance of comrades and friends, thinking that a ninja should only have missions, Kakashi patted Sasuke's little head and said, the prerequisite for being a leader is to become friends with them. Purely using force to suppress them is meaningless because they will eventually betray you. During this time, he fully realized Sasuke's astonishing talent. Being from the Uchiha clan, he would undoubtedly possess the Sharingan in the future. He already regarded him as his disciple, someone who could inherit his legacy, so he didn't want Sasuke to only focus on being the leader and neglect the true treasure. But Kakashi could also understand. Sasuke was still too inexperienced and didn't understand anything. Just then, in the dark corner not far away, Obito silently watched this scene. For various reasons, he often followed Kakashi. He even eavesdropped on Kashina's delivery time. You're still so naive, Kakashi, Obito said lazily, not wanting to listen to him educate the two kids anymore, and turned to leave. He had been in Konoha for almost a week, investigating all the while. It was true that Serutobi Hiruzen was being controlled by the Mangekio Sharingan. But the actual situation was far from what he had expected. For example, he thought it was Shisui vying for power. But it wasn't. Obito quickly discovered the key figure. Uchiha Ro. He had seen the changes in Konoha during this time very clearly. First, Root was disbanded, and the Anbu expanded, but the new members were almost all from the Uchiha clan. Second, the replacement of members in the Konoha police force, no longer dominated by the Uchiha clan, but joined by the Hyuga, Nara, Yamanaka, and other major ninja clans. There were also things like Tenchi Bridge and the three ninja swordsmen that he couldn't quite understand. Obito suddenly felt that Konoha was very unfamiliar. And the center of all this was three young people. Uchiha Ro, Uchiha Shisui, and Uchiha Itachi. Among them, the one playing the leading role was Uchiha Ro, which surprised him the most. He carefully observed that Uchiha Ro's strength was quite average. So he couldn't understand. But for him, it was indeed a good opportunity. Obito could easily get close to Uchiha Ro without worrying about the Genjutsu backfiring. After all, the Genjutsu of the Mangekyo Sharingan was varied. If he rashly approached Shisui, there might be problems. Although he believed that he could easily escape with his Kamui. Hum? Uchiha Itachi? Obito leapt onto a tree. 
he had seen Uchiha Itachi before and even killed his teammate. The reason he let him go back then was because he thought he might be useful. If it weren't for Li Zhang's interference, he would indeed have been quite helpful. Who? Uchiha Itachi suddenly drew the long knife from behind his back. Interesting. How did you discover me? Obito appeared generously in front of him. It's you. Uchiha Itachi's eyes narrowed, he could never forget that familiar mask. Why aren't you attacking me? Obito couldn't help but laugh. Could it be that you haven't improved? Uchiha Itachi remained unfazed and asked, Why did you come to Konoha? He remained calm and understood that he was no match for this mysterious person, so, he wanted to buy time and gather information. Obito looked at him with admiration. Uchiha Itachi was undoubtedly a very qualified ninja. After thinking for a moment, he said, I think you are qualified to join our organization. Organization? Uchiha Itachi's heart skipped a beat. This was actually an organization. Just this mysterious person alone was dangerous enough. Yes, our organization. Obito extended his hand in invitation and said, You have talent and enough ability. Join us and create a brand new world. What kind of world? A world without pain, without war, only peace. How will you achieve that? I can tell you, but if you don't join, death awaits you. Obito raised an eyebrow and smiled. Do you still want to know? He formed hand seals, and four shadow clones surrounded Uchiha Itachi. With wood style and Kamui, he had absolute confidence in instantly killing this so called genius. Uchiha Itachi also understood this logic, but he remembered what he had learned in the past half month. This mysterious organization was definitely a major enemy in the future. Please, go ahead, Uchiha Itachi said in a calm tone. Not bad, you have courage. Obito nodded and began talking about the moon's eye plan. In very simple terms, it was to use the moon to cast Genjutsu on the entire ninja world. Uchiha Itachi remained silent. He looked at Obito, who was boasting, and suddenly felt anger rising within him. What kind of person could come up with such a foolish plan? What meaning did life have if it was deceived by Genjutsu? It was all illusory. What do you think? Obito said triumphantly, It is your honor to participate in such a great plan. In the infinite Tsukuyomi, you can have everything. Sorry. I cannot agree. Uchiha Itachi shook his head and said, This plan is worthless. What did you say? Obito's face suddenly darkened. He absolutely would not allow anyone to insult Project Tsuki no Mi. It was his only lifeline and the only thing he relied on in his actions. Poor thing. Uchiha Itachi looked at his angry appearance and said, Do you understand anything? What do you understand? Obito was completely enraged, and his right eye instantly turned bloody red. Uchiha Itachi hardly reacted and was controlled by the powerful dojutsu. Then came Obito's fist. The force was so great. He could already hear the sound of bones breaking inside him. Uchiha Itachi spat out a mouthful of blood and said, I think you are the one who truly doesn't understand. I don't understand? Do you? Obito sneered and threw another punch. Illusions are ultimately illusions. They have no real foundation, so how can they bring you happiness? Uchiha Itachi's tone remained unchanged. Return to reality, everything starts from reality. Returning to reality is simply naive. Obito suddenly felt bored. The current ninja world is only filled with pain and war. Exactly because of that, we need to face it instead of running away. Uchiha Itachi opened his Sharingan and said, This is not running away, it's rebuilding. Obito felt a mix of embarrassment and anger. He was indeed running away. He wanted to create a world where Rin would love him. Perhaps that was why Obito didn't resurrect Rin. True peace is not a world created and dominated by your own power. Uchiha Itachi's emotion suddenly surged. He said firmly, it is a world where everyone is equal, without high or low, governed by law, where everyone contributes according to their abilities and resources are distributed according to needs. The anger in Obito's eyes reached its peak. Uchiha Itachi was too resolute, to the point where it made him doubt Project Tsuki no Mi. But soon, he regained his confidence. The moon's eye plan must be real. This guy was just trying to mislead him. Drown in your ideals. Countless branches sprouted from Obito's right arm, instantly swelling like arrows, piercing through Uchiha Itachi. Blood sprayed all over the ground, but he didn't die. Do you want to see the world I spoke of? Uchiha Itachi stood up calmly. His eyes kept spinning, and finally, two black circles connected like sickles appeared. Obito couldn't help but take a step back. 
At this moment, the radiant sunlight rose in the east. He looked at Uchiha Itachi and felt a sense of unease, as if he couldn't look him in the eye. The writing is limited, and I didn't achieve the effect I wanted. Obito realized that Uchiha Itachi had broken free from his control. In addition to these special patterned eyes, there is only one truth. Uchiha Itachi activated the Mangekyo Sharingan. It's simply inexplicable. At this moment, Obito's face was filled with vigilance, but he felt a hint of jealousy in his heart. Compared to him, Uchiha Itachi seemed too relaxed. Just a few words of illusion. But no matter what, Obito would not underestimate the power of any Sharingan. His rationality returned. He took a deep breath and observed Uchiha Itachi. A faint pressure and surging vitality emanated from him. Yang release? Obito suddenly found it unbelievable. How could it be Yang release? The Mangekyo Sharingan is the ultimate in Yin release. It was the first time he had seen Yang release eye techniques. It's simply unscientific. So what's the use? Obito suddenly noticed that the wounds inflicted on Uchiha Itachi by his wood style had already healed. Does Yang release have a healing effect on the body? It's a bit troublesome. He just didn't know how fast it was and to what extent it could heal. If it reached the level of Senju Hashirama, it could be called perverted. And it solved the biggest problem after Uchiha activated the Mangekyo Sharingan, blindness and physical weakness. Obito could freely use Kamui with the help of Hashirama's cells. If Uchiha Itachi's Yang release eye technique had this effect, he could also use it endlessly. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. The sound of breaking through the air rang out. Shurikens flew through his body at an extremely fast speed, creating small craters when they hit the ground. Obito had already activated Kamui in advance. Shadow clone. He looked towards the position where the shurikens appeared on the left and found another Uchiha Itachi. But his question remained unanswered. A dazzling blade descended from the sky. Obito saw a beautiful arc. You underestimate me too much. He snorted coldly and directly grabbed the katana. Hard branches emerged from his arm, piercing through Uchiha Itachi's shadow clone. No blood flowed out. The shadow clone staggered back a few steps. A flash of red light appeared on its body, and it returned to normal. The katana swung diagonally, turning into a blade of light. Obito quickly retreated. He already understood that this was not a shadow clone, but Uchiha Itachi's eye technique. A scorching aura spread from Obito's right side. He glanced over. A roaring fire dragon, nearly 10 meters long, covered his body in shadows. And on the left side, a chilling aura trembled. Two swirling streams of water attacked him. Obito's face looked somewhat embarrassed. There were actually four special clones, his right eyes suddenly froze. The space around him distorted. Obito took a deep breath and exhaled countless flames. The flames merged with the wind and expanded at an unimaginable speed. In an instant, a flaming tornado centered around Obito formed. Fire style. Exploding wind dance. The attacks of the four special clones were instantly broken. Only the two streams of water persisted for two seconds. But Obito didn't feel any reason to be happy. Because the injuries inflicted on the clones had healed in an instant. Not only that, but two more clones appeared. In other words, including himself, he was now fighting against seven Uchiha Itachis. He wasn't fighting one against seven, but he didn't have time to think about it. Uchiha Itachi's attacks came at him again. Obito suddenly realized a serious problem. His single-eyed Kamui was most afraid of continuous attacks. It can be cracked in just five minutes. For ordinary ninjas, it is almost impossible to attack without interruption for five minutes. But Uchiha Itachi is different, he has many people on his side. Once again, Obito evaded all attacks using Kamui. Uchiha Itachi, with an expressionless face, created three more special clones. He has always believed that every ninjutsu has its weaknesses. The same goes for this mysterious ninja's Kamui. He doesn't believe he can maintain this state forever. Obito's eyes narrowed, and three more clones appeared. Can't you handle it? Doubts of retreat arose in his heart. Continuing the fight is meaningless. Obito formed hand seals. Suddenly, several giant trees appeared around him, blooming like flowers. Then the branches spiraled upwards, enveloping Uchiha Itachi. Wood style. Hell's chaos. Still, strangely, there was no blood. Wait. Where is this guy's real body? Obito suddenly realized something was wrong. The wind howled. Uchiha Itachi's body blurred in the air, followed by a sonic boom. 
His speed had reached the ultimate level. Boom. Obito was kicked away. I have found your weakness, Uchiha Itachi said calmly. You cannot hollow while attacking. Obito inexplicably felt fear. He suddenly remembered his teacher, Namikaze Minato. In an instant, he was surrounded by nine special clones. Obito looked at the ten pairs of Mangekio Sharingan and involuntarily took a step back. Kamui. He activated his dojutsu without hesitation. His body twisted. You can absorb yourself too? Uchiha Itachi raised an eyebrow and unleashed a great fireball technique with a wave of his hand. The nine special clones made almost identical movements. The flames merged into one. Obito was completely engulfed. Uchiha Itachi heard a scream but didn't see a body. So, the speed of absorbing oneself is not as fast as I imagined. He concluded, if you still have this level of ability the next time we meet, you have no chance of survival. Uchiha Itachi dispelled his special clones. Tears of blood flowed from his eyes. Although his use of the unorthodox Yang release Dojutsu was burdensome, using it right after awakening was too much. He glanced into the distance. There were people approaching. Fortunately, the place where they fought was on the outskirts of Konoha. Plus, they didn't use any large-scale ninjutsu, otherwise they would have been detected long ago. Sasuke. What happened to your eyes? Shisui and Li Shang were the first to arrive. They happened to be at the Uchiha compound. Although they controlled Serutobi Hiruzen, the Uchiha clan had not moved back there and remained in a remote location. I activated the Mangekio Sharingan, but this is not the place to talk. Uchiha Itachi shook his head and said, let's go back to the Uchiha compound. After they left, more ninjas arrived, but they quickly returned to report to the Hokage as they had no significant findings. Only the two Hokage advisors remained. The traces of the Mangekio Sharingan, Maitokado Homura took a deep breath and said. He was a disciple of Senju Tobarama and had some knowledge of his teacher's research. Serutobi Hiruzen, Udatain Kaharu quickly realized the key point. His recent behavior has been too abnormal, especially disregarding our advice several times, and he even ordered the killing of Danzo. If it's the Mangekio Sharingan, it can explain it, Maitokado Homura's mind wavered. He didn't expect the Uchiha clan to dare to do such audacious things, nor did he expect this evil eye to resurface. Our power is limited. We must contact the Serutobi clan, the Hyuga clan, and the Ino Shika Cho trio, Udatane Kaharu said in a deep voice. The Serutobi clan has developed rapidly in recent years, and during the Fourth Great Ninja War, they were rumored to have an army of 3,000 Serutobi fire style soldiers. As for the Hyuga and Ino Shika Cho clans, it goes without saying that they have always been supporters of the Hokage lineage. Uchiha Itachi recounted his encounter with the masked man to Shisui and Li Shang. Shisui was astonished to learn that such a powerful organization was hidden within the ninja world. Seeing through a keyhole. Obito's deduction indicated that this organization was definitely not simple. The chaos caused by the Nine Tails alone would not be ignored by anyone. I only know about Project Tsuki no Mi, I have no other information, Uchiha Itachi said with a hint of regret. That's already impressive, Shisui patted his shoulder and said, if it were me, I might not have been able to find out anything. Besides, you unlocked the Mangekio Sharingan through a stroke of luck. It was a natural progression. Uchiha Itachi shook his head, I unlocked the Mangekio Sharingan not because of him, but because of my studies over the past half month. Shisui was slightly taken aback by his words. He didn't expect that it was really because of Li Shang. When he and Uchiha Fugaku talked about it earlier, they were still skeptical. Now that Uchiha Itachi had succeeded, it meant that the rest of the Uchiha clan had a chance. Of course, Shisui also understood that opportunity was one thing, but talent was more important. Not just any Uchiha could unlock the Mangekio Sharingan. Shisui wasn't greedy. Even without the Mangekio Sharingan, the three Tomo was already excellent. Aro, I will inform the clan head and have him promote your method with all his might. As long as it works, Li Shang glanced at Uchiha Atachi's tears of blood and said. In his view, the focus was not on whether it was effective or not, but rather that after this kind of study, the Uchiha clan would be able to change their arrogant bad habits. Studying not only brings wisdom, but also cultivates one's character. Wait, Shisui, I want you to take care of this matter, Li Shang stopped him and said, I hope you can recruit qualified members for Tendo. I will take charge, Shisui immediately understood what he meant. If the Uchiha clan had someone like Itachi, who had awakened his eyes through studying, then he would be the perfect warrior for Tendo. Itachi, 
Can you reveal the specific effects of your Mangekio Sharingan eye technique? Li Shang was really curious. In the past half month, Uchiha Itachi had almost exhausted all the knowledge from his previous life using the shadow clone technique. What kind of eye technique could he develop after nine years of compulsory education? Although Li Shang knew that the eye technique was the Uchiha clan's biggest secret, he couldn't help but ask. I can. Uchiha Itachi nodded without hesitation. In his view, Shisui and Li Shang were the two people he trusted the most in his life, even more than his parents. The eye technique in my right eye grants me powerful regenerative abilities, it is an extremely rare Yang release eye technique. It's truly incredible, Shisui couldn't help but say, there has never been a Yang release eye technique within the clan. To what extent can your regenerative abilities reach? Li Shang wasn't surprised. In his previous life, he knew about concepts like yin yang fusion and yin yang transformation. As long as it's not an instant kill, I can recover, Uchiha Itachi thought for a moment and said. Impressive, Li Shang exclaimed. If Uchiha Madara had this eye technique back then, he wouldn't have suffered such a miserable defeat. The Mangekyo Sharingan is a reflection of the soul. He understood why Uchiha Itachi awakened this ability. Faith or belief. It can bring infinite power to a person. Just like soldiers from a past life, they surpassed the limits of life on the battlefield and created various mythical achievements. Is it because they are superhuman? No, it's because they possess unparalleled faith. Under the reflection of the Mangekyo Sharingan, it becomes a terrifying regenerative ability. Uchiha Itachi may become the first Uchiha warrior immune to death. Li Shang thought about his future frail body and wondered if there could be any improvement. The ability of my left eye is to summon special clones that have the same strength as me. Uchiha Itachi continued, as long as my visual prowess is sufficient, theoretically, there is no limit to the number. Doesn't this feel like an enhanced version of the shadow clone technique? Shisui pondered and said, very powerful dojutsu. Not the same. Uchiha Itachi shook his head and said, all the special clones are located in a different space, and only I can summon them. Moreover, since they are physical entities, they can be modified, such as wearing chakra armor. Li Shang tugged at the corner of his mouth, isn't this invincible? One Uchiha Itachi is already troublesome enough, but with thousands of Uchiha Itachi, he felt that they could easily conquer the entire ninja world. Most importantly, he felt that Uchiha Itachi awakening this dojutsu was very reasonable. Isn't it just a tactic of overwhelming numbers? This is too strong, isn't it? Shisui swallowed his saliva. He and Li Shang were just worrying about recruiting people for Tendo, and suddenly this dojutsu appeared. What else do they need others for? It just looks invincible. Uchiha Itachi knew what they were thinking and said, The special clones have no self-awareness and can only be controlled by my original body. I can control a maximum of 10, but beyond that, I would be overwhelmed and it would actually decrease my own strength. Li Shang nodded slightly. That sounds much more normal. But even so, who can defeat 10 Uchiha Itachi? Li Shang was looking forward to the moment when Uchiha Madara was resurrected and faced 10 pairs of Mangekyo Sharingan, wondering how confused he would be. Can the special clones use Suzano? He had a terrifying thought. They cannot. Uchiha Itachi shook his head. What a pity. Li Shang really wanted to see Uchiha Madara's reaction. The Mangekyo Sharingan is indeed powerful, but it is not omnipotent. Shisui nudged Li Shang with his elbow and said, But when will you be able to activate the Mangekyo Sharingan? Next time, for sure. Li Shang spread his hands and said, Didn't I already activate the Sharingan? It's coming soon. The reason he opened his eyes was quite bizarre. Because Uchiha Itachi learned too quickly, he often asked him questions later on. After imitating Yuan Hua's expression of, I can't do this problem. It's too difficult. In a meme, Li Shang suddenly activated the two Tomo Sharingan. Of course, the main reason was that he had accumulated enough. Uchiha Itachi, on the other hand, looked stunned. Since Li Shang graduated, he felt that the Uchiha clan was about to be ruined, everything was abnormal. Toya. What's the name of your dojutsu? Li Shang suddenly thought of something and eagerly said, I can help you come up with one. Go ahead. Uchiha Itachi already had some ideas but since Li Shang wanted to say, he definitely wouldn't refuse. The dojutsu of your left eye is called Crimson Torrent, and the dojutsu of your right eye is called Steel Ambition. Li Shang paused and said, although they are not named after gods, I think you can consider them. I think they're good. Uchiha Itachi pondered for a moment and said, 
Whether or not they are named after gods doesn't matter. As mortals, standing shoulder to shoulder with gods, what we do is no less than what gods do. Toya, it seems like you already have the qualifications to graduate. Li Shang couldn't help but laugh at his words. The awakening of Uchiha Atachi's Mangekyo Sharingan was undoubtedly a pleasant surprise. Although Li Shang had imagined this scene, he was still surprised that it actually worked. In his opinion, the new two dujutsu were more suitable for Uchiha Itachi than Amaterasu and Tsukuyomi. Amaterasu, although hailed as the strongest offensive dujutsu, did not live up to its title in the original work. On the other hand, Tsukuyomi was not bad, however, it had its limitations. It had no effect in the Mangekyo Sharingan internal conflict. With Uchiha Itachi's strength, he could handle ordinary strong opponents even without Tsukuyomi. Two more days passed. The Tenbu finger ring that Li Shang had commissioned from the ninja tool shop was finally completed. After paying, he had Shisui modify the shopkeeper's memory to prevent him from leaking the information. There are a total of seven finger rings, although they are chakra ninja tools, they only have symbolic meaning. You can choose for yourselves. Li Shang took out all the finger rings and said, They are Hoshino, Qingjun, Wanlei, Kangming, Dahuang, Weiguang, and Billa. Shisui glanced at them and saw no difference except for the words. He thought for a moment, picked up the Wanlei finger ring, and asked, does it have any significance? In the face of extreme danger, the mind remains unmoved, the utmost of tenacity. It seems I made the right choice. Shisui smiled, he really liked this phrase. What about me? Uchiha Itachi asked hesitantly, why don't you choose one for me, Lang? The ruler of the blue and green, broad and boundless, soaring freely. Li Shang handed him the Qingjun finger ring and said, I hope you can achieve true freedom. The original Uchiha Itachi was highly controversial, but it cannot be denied that those who are detestable will also suffer. Shisui, you can keep the remaining finger rings. Li Shang put on the Billa finger ring himself and said, After all, you recruited the members. Shisui trusted him without any doubt and nodded. At the same time, the Hyuga residents welcomed long lost guests. So it's the two Hokage advisors. Hyuga Hiyashi spoke in a calm tone. The last time they stepped into this place, they took the life of his younger brother, Hyuga Hazashi. The only difference was that two people were missing. Hyuga clan leader, we are here for a matter that requires your help. Udatane Kaharu spoke in a gentle tone, Hokage-sama has been acting unusually lately, and we suspect that he is being controlled by Uchiha. We hope you can use the Byakugan to observe the situation. Hyuga Hiyashi showed a surprised expression and asked, Are you sure something is wrong? Hokage-sama, how could he be controlled? Udatane Kaharu and Maitokado Homura exchanged glances, it seemed that the Hyuga clan had not betrayed. I understand your feelings, Hyuga clan leader, and we also believe in Hokage-sama. But this matter is of great importance, it's best for you to confirm it. If you believe in Hokage-sama, you shouldn't have come to me. Hyuga Hiyashi looked at them with a serious expression, Hokage-sama will never be controlled. Please leave now the Hyuga clan will not do anything that insults Hokage-sama. Hyuga clan leader, you. Udatane Kaharu couldn't help but feel angry. Escort them out. Hyuga Hiyashi said without any politeness. He may be a good person, but that doesn't mean he won't get angry. The incident with Hyuga Hazashi was still vivid in his memory. Today, he wanted to be tough. After the two Hokage advisors left in disappointment, Hyuga Hiyashi remained silent for a moment and said, go inform the Anbu. In less than 10 minutes, Li Shang received the intelligence. I didn't pay much attention to you too, but you just couldn't let it go. Li Shang shook his head. These two Hokage advisors were truly power hungry. Even when Tsunade, Kakashi, and Naruto were Hokage, they still wanted to make their presence known and muddy the waters. But they were smart, daring to come out meant they had confidence. They were teammates of Serutobi Hiruzen and Shimura Danzo so it's not surprising that they have a close relationship and discovered something abnormal. Uchiha Itachi squinted his eyes and asked, Lang, how should we deal with them? Should we control them? No need to rush. They will definitely contact the major ninja clans. Otherwise, it would be impossible for them to oppose us Uchiha, replied Lang. Li Shang twirled the finger ring in his hand and said, then let's catch them all in one net. He envied the wealth of the Serutobi clan. On the other hand, the Shimura clan was doing just average. Although Danzo wasn't good at playing conspiracies, he was dedicated to Konoha, focusing on the route and not seeking benefits for his own clan. 
Serutobi Hirazan was very clever. Just by looking at how he arranged for his son, Serutobi Asuma, to become a guardian ninja at the daimyo's place in the Land of Fire, and later made him the leader of the new generation Ino Shika Cho, one could glean some information. His grandson, Serutobi Konohamaru, was even more remarkable, always hanging out with Naruto since childhood. Even if he couldn't become Hokage, he would definitely thrive and ensure that the Serutobi clan would not decline for at least two generations. Although we have control over Serutobi Hirazan, it is not a long-term solution, Li Shang said with a smile. This is an opportunity, an opportunity for the Hokage to lead a rebellion. Shisui immediately understood what he meant. If they were to release Serutobi Hirazan from their control now, no matter how mild-tempered he was, being treated as a puppet would surely make him furious. In addition, with the support of the two Hokage advisors, the Hokage would undoubtedly take action. No, that's not right. There's no need to release control. Then we need to become the victims, Uchiha Itachi said calmly. Shisui, you control Serutobi Hirazan and make him leave evidence of persecuting us. When everything is over, we will release it, relying on the media manipulation of the Sanjunki Entertainment Company. We will stand undefeated. Li Shang raised an eyebrow. He hit the nail on the head. With the correct knowledge, Uchiha Itachi would undoubtedly be an extremely useful weapon. But what Li Shang didn't expect was that on that same night, Nara Shikaku came to visit. What a rare guest, Li Shang greeted him and asked, is this the first time the Nara clan leader has come to the Uchiha residence? It should have been visited earlier, Nara Shikaku smiled and said, I came today to inform you about the two Hokage advisors. They believe that the Hokage is being controlled and want us to help them eliminate you Uchiha. Why are you telling me this? Li Shang was somewhat surprised. He hadn't even started economic cooperation with Ino Shika Cho yet, so why did they surrender in advance? Ino Shika Cho can't afford to lose, Nara Shikaku spoke frankly. And he had another reason. The Hyuga clan did not participate in this matter. He suspected that Hyuga Hiyashi had made a deal with the Uchiha. Since that was the case, they dared not get involved. So, how did the two Hokage advisors plan to deal with us? Li Shang asked with a smile. Nara Shikaku was so sensible, so Li Shang naturally welcomed him. After all, he couldn't kill all the ninja clans. That's divide and conquer, Nara Shikaku explained. They want to gather the Jonin when you are alone and surround and kill you. That's indeed a good plan. Li Shang took out a scroll and said, This ninjutsu can release Serutobi Hirazan from control. Nara Shikaku couldn't help but be stunned. The two Hokage advisors were actually telling the truth. But what surprised him even more was Li Zhang's actions at this moment. What great confidence! With Nara Shikaku's intelligence, he almost instantly understood what Li Shang wanted to do. At this moment, he couldn't help but feel fortunate. Fortunately, they supported the Hokage and not Serutobi Hirazan. Li Shang continued, You tell them that the day after tomorrow, Uchiha Itachi will be going out on a mission. The time rewinds back two days, somewhere in the death forest. Uchiha Itachi, I want you dead. Obito's expression was so fierce that he wanted to tear apart his fellow clan member. Since obtaining the Mangekyo Sharingan and Hashirama's cells, he had only suffered one defeat. That was during the Nine Tails rampage and his battle with Namikaze Minato. That was, after all, the famous Golden Flash, losing to him was not embarrassing. But this time, it was a ten-year-old brat. Not only couldn't he defeat him, but he also couldn't argue with him. It was truly infuriating. Obito's current mood was almost as furious as when he witnessed Kakashi killing Rin with his own hands. But the previous time was a rage of incompetence, and this time was still the same. He realized that even if he used his trump card, he might not be able to defeat Uchiha Itachi. Unless it was the double Kamui. Obito clenched his fist, his expression constantly changing. The reason he didn't snatch back his eye was because of two reasons. First, this eye was a gift he personally gave to Kakashi taking it back might expose his identity. Second, he didn't need it. With Kamui, he believed he could go anywhere, and the empty eye could be used to install the Sharingan for using Izanagi. Tisk, it's really miserable. The annoying voice of White Zetsu sounded. Do you want to die? Obito asked coldly. All right, let's change the topic. Don't you want revenge? White Zetsu smirked and said, We don't need to take action, we just need to release Serutobi Hirazan from control. Obito subconsciously looked at him. This was indeed a good method. Simple and effective. Easily instigating internal strife within Konoha. 
and he could take advantage of the chaos to take Kakashi away. With the Hokage and Uchiha at odds, it would be reasonable to have one less Kakashi. For a while, no one would associate him with it. Obito took a deep breath and said, We can't release him directly. We need to deal with some of Serutobi Hirazin's subordinates. Otherwise, it won't be lively enough. He decisively locked onto two Hokage advisors. With Danzo dead, they were the most suitable. And because Serutobi Hirazin was being controlled, their power had also been reduced. As he expected, Obito smoothly established a connection with the two Hokage advisors. In the eyes of Utatane Kaharu and Mitokado Homura, Obito was indeed mysterious and dangerous, but if they could release Serutobi Hirazan from control and regain their power, it would be worth it. There was no doubt that the two of them were deeply entangled in the vortex of power. Obito really liked them, because this kind of Konoha was the least threatening. Another meeting was held. Nara Shikaku originally wanted to present the scroll, but the two Hokage advisors introduced Obito first. They said he was a root ninja who was extremely skilled in genjutsu and mental ninjutsu. He was certain that the Hokage was being controlled by the Sharingan and had a way to release it. Nara Shikaku knew that something was off, but he didn't ask anything and just informed them about Uchiha Itachi's plan to go out the day after tomorrow. Utatane Kaharu, Maitokado Homura, and Obito all showed excited smiles upon hearing this. The former two thought that they were being helped by fate, while the latter thought that he could seek revenge. The most troublesome thing about Uchiha Itachi's dojutsu was that it was effective against a large number of people. But now, with so many Jonin present, Obito felt that the weather had cleared up for him. After the meeting, Li Shang received the information. It's that masked man. Uchiha Itachi could almost confirm the identity of this root ninja without hesitation. Distinguished Heavenly Gods was the dojutsu of the Mangekyo Sharingan. To unlock it, only the Mangekyo Sharingan had a chance. But it was only a chance. The masked man definitely doesn't know that it's distinguished heavenly gods, otherwise, he wouldn't be so confident. Li Shang couldn't help but smile and said, Well, if it's a helping hand that comes to us, we can't refuse. We have another reason now. Hokage Sama, along with the manipulator of the Nine Tails, is attempting to eliminate the Uchiha. Shisui and Uchiha Itachi also laughed. They found that this mysterious masked man didn't seem very clever. I will help him, Shisui readily agreed he got up and left. After squatting in the Hokage's office for half an hour, the two Hokage advisors and Obito entered. What's going on? Serutobi Hirazan, although affected by the distinguished heavenly gods, behaved no differently from before. Obito didn't answer. He raised his hand to cover his eyes and activated the Mangekyo Sharingan. Serutobi Hirazan felt a tremor in his body, his face gradually becoming dull, and soon he pretended to look shocked. What have I done? He exclaimed, his face filled with anguish. Oh, my good friend, I have killed you. Udatane Kaharu and Maitokado Homura exchanged glances. They're back, they're all back. They quickly recounted what had happened recently and, in the end, expressed their loyalty. Everything is ready, we just need the east wind. With just a word from you, Konoha can be set right again. First, capture Shisui and the others, then eliminate the Uchiha, and Konoha will welcome a bright future, they said. Serutobi Hirazan naturally agreed, he called for another meeting. But only members of the Serutobi clan, the Mito clan, the Yamanaka clan, the Shimura clan, and the Inoshika Cho were present. Except for the Hyuga clan, all the well-known and prominent clans of Konoha were here. After scolding the Uchiha, Serutobi Hirazan announced that the operation would begin the day after tomorrow. The Gates of Konoha Uchiha Itachi registered with the two gatekeepers and provided them with the Hokage's order. After completing the procedure, he left Konoha. This time, his mission was to go to the Fire Country metropolis and negotiate with the Hina Trading Company. As he passed through the Long Death Forest, Uchiha Itachi couldn't help but shake his head. They really can't wait, huh? He stopped in his tracks. Countless ninjas surged around him. Hokage-sama, what does this mean? Uchiha Itachi asked. Yu Uchiha manipulated the Nine Tails Rampage and killed the root leader Danzo. Your crimes are unforgivable, Hokage-sama replied. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha have nothing to do with the Nine Tails Rampage, do you have any evidence? Uchiha Itachi questioned. My words are evidence. Uchiha Itachi fell silent for a moment and asked again, Did you order the killing of Shimura Danzo? You Uchiha manipulated me, where's the evidence? I am the Hokage, my words are evidence. 
Sarutobi Hirazan snorted coldly and repeated his reasons. Surprisingly, Udatane Kaharu and the others had no objections. Uchiha Itachi couldn't help but feel disappointed. What exactly did he believe in when he previously believed in the will of fire? Although Serutobi Hirazan said those words under Shisui's control, the others didn't. Uchiha Itachi looked at Obito, and even though he was disguised, he couldn't hide his hatred. He raised his hand and said, Hokage sama, this guy attacked me earlier and has Sharingan. He is highly likely to be the true mastermind behind the Nine Tails rampage. How do you know? Serutobi Hirazan asked instinctively. Suddenly, there was silence all around. Even Mitokado Homura and Utatane Kaharu widened their eyes. Obito's heart suddenly skipped a beat, a very dangerous premonition surging up. Then countless ninjas appeared, forming a new encirclement. Li Shang looked at Serutobi Hirazan, filled with sorrow and anger, and said, Hokage sama, why are you rebelling? Although the plan was simple, the effect had already been achieved. No matter how much the others questioned, they couldn't change the truth spoken by Serutobi Hirazan. Serutobi Hirazan's sudden confession left everyone dumbfounded. This included the two Hokage advisors and Obito. However, Obito reacted quickly and without hesitation activated his Mangekyo Sharingan. Kamui. His body suddenly twisted, but this action precisely proved his identity. The enormous pattern in the Nine Tails' eyes was clearly visible back then. Ninjas who had the fortune of experiencing and surviving it almost instantly sensed this familiar fluctuation of the eye power. There was an uproar. Li Shang smiled faintly. When people's hearts scatter, it becomes difficult to lead them. Hurry up. Obito's expression remained unchanged, but his heart was in a panic. Uchiha Itachi looked at him expressionlessly. A katana suddenly appeared behind Obito and pierced through him. The distortion of Kamui disappeared, leaving only a pool of blood. Uchiha Itachi had prepared a special clone underground in advance, aiming to deliver a fatal blow to Obito. Although there was no body, the likelihood of surviving such injuries was very low. Li Shang glanced at it and said nothing. Obito had Izanagi, so it was difficult for him to die. However, consuming one Sharingan was already a good result. The Uchiha clan was not exterminated, but Obito didn't have much left. Li Shang turned his head and looked at the three clan heads of Inoshika Cho. Nara Shikaku gritted his teeth and stepped forward, angrily saying, The Hokage has betrayed Konoha. The Nara clan is willing to support the Uchiha. Yamanaka Inoichi and Akamichi Choza quickly followed suit, saying, We feel the same way. In an instant, half of the power was lost. Only the Serutobi clan, the Yamanaka clan, and the Mito clan remained. Hirazan, what should we do now? Mitokado Homura's voice trembled slightly. Even though it was a scene where the forces were evenly matched, the situation suddenly reversed. His heart couldn't handle it at all. The ups and downs were just too exciting. Hirazan, you're so calm, you must have a trick up your sleeve, right? Udatane Kaharu noticed his expression and quickly asked. Both of them no longer called him Hokage, proving that they were indeed in a state of panic. They called him by the name they used when they were teammates. I never thought we would fight side by side again. Serutobi Hirazan showed a nostalgic expression. His distinguished heavenly gods were not released. But memories and such still remained. Hirazan, this is not the time to talk about that. Udatane Kaharu was already too anxious to listen to his sentimentality. She didn't want to die here. Let us do our last bit for Konoha. Serutobi Hirazan rushed towards Uchiha Itachi with a loud roar. Leaving behind two stunned Hokage advisors. They both had one thought in their minds, they've gone mad they've all gone mad. Li Shang raised his hand and the battle began. He had no intention of participating. After all, he knew his own limitations, he was just an ordinary Jonin. Even though no one saw him as a ninja. This world simulation has reached the highest evaluation, the Uchiha clan massacre incident has been resolved. You can choose to return by suicide or return freely, but the evaluation and rewards cannot be increased. The slogan for free return is, if I could start over, I would choose Li Bai. After returning, the Hokage ninja world will continue according to the current plot. The simulator, which hadn't been seen for a long time, suddenly displayed four lines of text. There was a lot of information. The highest evaluation was within Li Zhang's expectations. He used his eloquence to change the beliefs of Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi, and dealt with Serutobi Hirazan, Shimura Danzo, and others leaving a deep impression on Obito in passing.
imperfect as it may be, he suspected whether the simulator wanted to embezzle his rewards. What shocked Li Shang was the last line of words. If he understood correctly, it meant that everything he had done had become a real past. The next time he entered the world of Hokage ninjas, the plot might undergo earth-shattering changes. But fortunately, he had made preparations in advance. The existence of Tendo would provide him with unimaginable convenience. And Uchiha Lang would become a puppet that only he could control. Using it would be completely problem-free. Li Shang came to his senses and suddenly sighed. He felt a bit reluctant to leave. Looking back at his short ten years, the most emotional were undoubtedly Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi. And their destinies had undoubtedly undergone earth-shattering changes. Li Shang pondered and considered that he had done a good deed, at least saving the lives of many people. It was the energy of the simulator that surprised him even more. The perfect clearance could actually have an impact on reality. The world of Hokage ninjas, for his main world, was equivalent to a small world or a parallel world. Li Shang couldn't be sure for the time being. But he knew he had to find a way to bid farewell to his two Tendo members. The battle ended quickly. Sarutobi Hirazan, Udatane Kaharu, and Maitokado Homura, the three old men, had long lost their strength from their youth. Not to mention the fact that there was a spy among them. After the three of them were killed, the rest quickly surrendered. A carefully orchestrated play came to an end. Here. Shisui handed over a scroll and said, there are the things you requested to be recorded. He couldn't help but admire Li Zhang's meticulousness. Not only did he make Serutobi Hirazan and Uchiha Itachi perform in front of the major ninja clans in Konoha, but he also recorded everything with a camera as evidence. Li Shang didn't take it and said, give it to the three swordsmen and let them make it public. No problem. Shisui put away the scroll and looked at the chaotic battlefield, saying, the old era has passed, and a new era is about to come. It belongs to Artendo. Li Shang raised the finger guard in his hand and said. Shisui was slightly startled and smiled. Yes, it belongs to Artendo. After cleaning up the battlefield, they returned to the Hokage Tower and held a new Jonin meeting. Li Shang was probably the only ninja who was not a Jonin but could attend the meeting. As for the candidate for acting Hokage, I wonder what everyone thinks. The one presiding over the meeting was Nara Shikaku. He already held the position of Hokage's advisor. The reason why it was an acting Hokage was because the official Hokage needed the approval of the daimyo. Almost everyone looked at the four Uchiha. After a moment of silence, no one spoke. Li Shang shrugged, wondering why it was like this again. He spoke up, I think my teacher can do it. In terms of strength, both Shisui and Uchiha Itachi were capable, but they were too young and would easily provoke other ninja villages. In addition, during the early stages of reform, there were too many places to take the blame. Although everyone was currently getting along well, when it came to their own interests, they might turn their backs and resort to underhanded tactics. In that case, let Uchiha Fugaku inherit the will of the Hokage, attract firepower in the open, and stir up trouble in the dark. After Li Shang finished speaking, Shisui and Itachi nodded in agreement, and thus Uchiha Fugaku became the new Hokage. He never dreamed that this day would come. After Serutobi Hirazan took the stage, the Uchiha actually understood that they had no chance of becoming Hokage. Li Shang stayed in Konoha for a few more days and finished all the things he needed to explain. Finally, taking advantage of the expansion of the heavenly world, he proposed to personally go to the Fire Country metropolis. On the way, he chose to return to the main world. Simulation of this world ends. Evaluation. Your eloquence is comparable to Jackie Chan's persuasion skills, leading two lost young men back to the right path. Reward. 5 simulation coins, current balance, 9b, 1 random talent, 99% chance of obtaining a high quality one, and 2 random items, 99% chance of obtaining good quality ones. The next simulation will start in one week, related event, Hokage Ninja, Konoha Collapse Plan. The main world probably has four or five chapters of content, followed by Hokage. Li Shang opened his eyes, it was still his shabby little house. The past ten years had flown by like a movie, without causing any trouble to his spirit. And only one night had passed. Tisk, if this simulator were applied to work. Li Shang shivered. Why do I have such a terrifying idea of being hanged? Orochimaru is quite brave. Li Shang saw the final prompt of the simulator and couldn't help but feel a sense of respect. Facing Konoha, which possessed three pairs of Mangekyo Sharingan, Orochimaru still carried out the plan to destroy Konoha. 
he is truly an exemplary figure. There are two additional random items in the highest evaluation, I wonder what they are. Li Shang was somewhat surprised, but also felt it was reasonable. Having only one talent was a bit stingy. Magic wand, a rank, you have unimaginable talent in magic, and can even rival legendary magical girls. Grandpa on the subway looking at his phone. JPG. Having an A rank talent was definitely winning the jackpot. But this description made Li Shang feel a chill in his lower body. The simulation won't have female characters, right? He refused. My second brother, invincible in the world, is definitely indispensable. He has no interest in being a magical girl. The whole pink twin tails and white stockings thing is too embarrassing. Mysterious item, E rank, to be delivered tomorrow. Special pet, C rank, to be delivered tomorrow. Li Shang rubbed his chin, finding the wording interesting. This also proves that the main world he is in is likely not ordinary. He wasn't interested in the E rank item, but he thought the C rank pet shouldn't be too bad. Hum, it would be best to have an elf, succubus, or a Gundam. A new day begins. Li Shang put on his headphones. Quickly use the nunchaku, hum ha ha. Remember, a martial artist must be kind hearted and invincible. He hummed a song while walking to school. On the way, Li Shang thought of a question. Can he extract chakra, or can he use ninjutsu and taijutsu? He ran to a quiet park to test it out. But unfortunately, the physical constitution of humans cannot be generalized. He and ninjas are completely different at the cellular level. The good news is that some taijutsu is still useful here. For example, throwing ninja tools, Uchiha's swordsmanship, and martial arts. Without the support of chakra, the power is definitely far inferior to that of a janin. Li Shang estimated that he could reach the level of a grandmaster. Of course, not like the disrespectful Ma Lao Shi, but like Bruce Lee. Without any hesitation, Li Shang arranged his own schedule. During this period, besides going to school, he planned to practice taijutsu. He didn't aim to become invincible, just being able to defend himself would be good enough. A few minutes later, Li Shang arrived at the school gate. He stopped and looked up. A huge red banner was hanging in the center of the gate. In his impression, the school only hung banners for extremely important events. Like a certain student getting into Tsinghua or Peking University. Although Li Zhang's school was the top one in their county, it was average nationwide. Only one or two students would get into Tsinghua or Peking University each year. But that's not the point, the point is the content of the banner. Congratulations to Li Shang, a student from class 2 of the third grade, for being admitted to the University of London in advance. After confirming that he hadn't fallen under a genjutsu, Li Shang was left with only one possibility. The E rank item he obtained last night. Otherwise, there is no way to explain it. Unless it's like Luo Mingfei in Dragonblood, who was discovered because of his special bloodline. But he remembers that was the University of Chicago. Li Shang entered the classroom and immediately received everyone's attention. After a moment of silence, they picked up their pen and notebook, their hands moving up and down. Although everyone was well educated, faced with the University of London, they couldn't help but blurt out a plant and an animal. Li Shang couldn't say anything else, so he could only maintain a smile. Just then, a cough sounded from outside the door. It was their Chinese teacher, Lu Jiangguo. Li Shang, come to my office. Li Shang stood up and left his seat. Lu Jiangguo was his homeroom teacher, and he was particularly cold during class. After all, there were too many mischievous kids, and he couldn't control them without being stern. But at this moment, he was very enthusiastic. I don't have Coca-Cola that you all like here, so just make do with plain water. Li Shang took the paper cup, feeling a bit flattered. Although he wanted to say that he preferred Sprite over Coca-Cola. Li Shang, you really surprised me quietly. Lu Jiangguo said with emotion, it makes me feel like I'm dreaming. A student from the University of London came out under his guidance. His reward was inevitable, it's nothing. Li Shang shook his head and said. He was more used to the teacher who suddenly appeared from behind the door or the window with a face that seemed to owe him a lot of money. Not bad. Lu Jiangguo said with satisfaction, being humble and not arrogant, this humility is rare and worthy of all students to learn. I didn't know you were so good at speaking. Indeed, whatever a good student does in school is right. Li Shang changed the topic and asked, Teacher, how did you confirm that I was admitted? According to the normal procedure, he should have submitted an application to the foreign university and been accepted before he could be considered admitted. Oh, speaking of this, I almost forgot. 
it's because the University of London sent a representative personally. We verified her information and found no problems. Lu Jiangguo patted his head and said, she said to let you meet her when you arrive. Li Shang couldn't help but narrow his eyes. This was completely abnormal. The University of London actually sent someone to visit a student they admitted? She's in room 210. Lu Jiangguo continued, go meet her. Li Shang nodded. Room 210 was on the second floor and was where the teachers usually held meetings. Li Shang pushed open the door, looked around, and finally his gaze fell on the person by the window. He was very surprised. It turned out to be a girl about the same age as him. She was sitting on the table. Her short boots were thrown aside, revealing slender legs wrapped in black stockings. Her eyes were cold and seemed to be absent-minded, with a hint of emptiness. Her delicate appearance was like a doll, with long blue-black hair cascading down to her waist. The only flaw was that her face was a bit flat, like a steel plate. Otherwise, she would be perfect. Apart from that, she seemed vaguely familiar, as if he had seen her somewhere. When she saw Li Shang, her eyes brightened, but quickly dimmed, she spoke, Welcome, Junior. Very fluent Chinese. Her tone was also very calm, without any emotions. Li Shang couldn't quite figure out her nationality. But he was a boy who had experienced storms and wouldn't be confused by beauty. Hello. I'm Li Shang. A stati. The girl casually picked up a red letter and swung her feet wrapped in stockings. I prefer to be straightforward, I hope you don't mind, Junior. A stati said in a calm tone, you are not going to the University of London, but to the research institution under the Magic Association, the Clock Tower. So it's type moon. The Magic Association, is it the kind of magic I understand? Li Shang made a motion of a dealer dealing cards online and asked. Astarte's eyes flickered with surprise. It's truly puzzling how someone who knows nothing about the Magic Association can obtain a special enrollment. It's not the kind of magic you're thinking of. Astarte took out a red gemstone and uttered a word. A flame flickered in her palm. Li Shang fell silent for a moment before asking, You call this magic? He was serious with his sarcasm, he had always wanted to know in his previous life. You can think of it as magic in novels or movies. But remember, as a magician, you should never casually mention the word, magic. Li Shang nodded. In the world of type moon, the concept of magic is more like a law of the world, and each type possesses unimaginable power. Let me give you a brief introduction. The clock tower is one of the three major departments of the Magic Association. It is located on the outskirts of London and has a history of over 2,000 years. We manage, conceal, and develop magic, and we are at the forefront of magical research. Astarte paused for a moment, picked up a piece of paper, and continued reading with a calm expression. The clock tower is divided into twelve disciplines, general foundation, individual foundation, spirit evocation, mineralogy, zoology, inheritance, botany, celestial bodies, creation, curses, archaeology, and modern magical theory. Each discipline has its own specialized magical system, theoretically without any distinction of superiority or inferiority. I come from the discipline of mineralogy. The magic I just used is one of the gemstone magic systems. By combining different types and quantities of gemstones, different magic can be used. Hum, it's expensive. Only magicians with financial means can afford it. Li Shang thought of Rin Tasaka, one of the heroines in Fate, Stay Night. She also used gemstone magic. After her father, Tokiomi Tasaka, died and she couldn't afford the huge expenses, she had to work part time. According to the normal enrollment procedure, you would need to study general foundation for five years, with the main course being magician knowledge, and then transfer to other disciplines, just like going from high school to university. Astarte looked at the admission letter and said, Hum, you are a special enrollment student, so you can skip general foundation. Special enrollment? Li Shang looked at her and asked, What's special about me? I'm curious too. Astarte blinked meaningfully and said, Originally, this spot belonged to the El Meloy family, but it was temporarily replaced by you. El Meloy? Li Shang heard a familiar surname. It is related to Kenneth and Waver. Both of them participated in the Fourth Holy Grail War. But the former had already died, and the latter returned to the clock tower and inherited the El Meloy title, becoming one of the Twelve Lords. In the FGO mobile game, Waver borrowed the power of Zhu Liang and was summoned as a servant by players. The clock tower has twelve disciplines and twelve lords, they are the top figures in the world of magic. Astarte propped up her chin with one hand and said, Fortunately, Lord El Meloy is in trouble, so he probably won't interfere with your affairs. If it's the second, 
then it refers to waiver. Li Shang quickly deduced that the current time point is just before the start of the Fifth Holy Grail War. In the plot of Lord El Meloy E. Case Files, starting off by offending one of the main characters doesn't seem good. But considering Waver's personality, he doesn't seem like a magician who would be petty. Originally, I was commissioned by the Lord of the Mineralogy Discipline to invite you, but since you were unfamiliar with the Clock Tower, you should read this book first. Astarte took out a book and handed it to Li Shang. Thank you. Li Shang opened it directly. In his previous life, he had some knowledge about the Clock Tower, but it was all from anime and not very specific. This book, Introduction to the Twelve Disciplines of the Clock Tower, was more detailed. Astarte stared at him without blinking, her gaze as calm as space. Half an hour later, Li Shang looked up and said, I have a basic understanding now. Do you have any idea which discipline you want to join? Astati tilted her head, I actually hope you join the Or Science Department and become my junior. A moment of dumbfoundedness. Li Shang remained unaffected. His thoughts were not on women, but on the entrance to this new world. Do special admissions have any privileges? You can have a teacher. Astati explained, in the clock tower, lecturers and teachers are two different concepts. The former only gives lectures, but the latter, in addition to being a lecturer, also serves as your personal mentor. If the senior can recommend a teacher for me, I can join the Or Science Department. Li Shang thought for a moment and said, Under normal circumstances, he should choose modern magic and follow the protagonist Weber. But he had unintentionally offended him, plus the Elmero family had been in a bad state since Kenneth's death. Li Shang had no need to get involved in these struggles right now. His cheat was the emulator. As long as he had enough talent, it would be easy for him to intervene. Very clever. Astati hooked her finger and said, I really like you, joining the Or Science Department won't be a loss. Li Shang ignored her joke and said, Thank you, senior. Next is the aptitude test. Astati didn't mind retracting her finger and said, A magician's aptitude is determined by the magic circuits within their body. The so called magic circuits can be understood as special nerves. Without them, magic cannot be used. The criteria for evaluation are the quantity and quality of the magic circuits. How do we test it? It's simple. Astati put on her boots and jumped off the table. Li Shang noticed at this moment that the girl was only about 1.5 meters tall, a head shorter than him. Astati also noticed the height issue. She tiptoed slightly and reached out to press on Li Zhang's head. At the same time, she took out a blue gemstone and effortlessly crushed it into powder. If Li Shang remembered correctly, the hardness of a blue gemstone was 9, second only to the diamond's 10. Astati uttered a syllable. A mysterious blue enveloped him. Li Shang suddenly felt a faint burning sensation in his right arm. He rolled up his sleeve and saw three circuits. Three magic circuits in quantity, but of high quality. Overall, your magic aptitude is a level. Astati took two steps back and said, After activating the magic circuits, the body will feel uncomfortable, and the longer you use them, the more painful it becomes. The switch for the magic circuits is called the mind's image. You can feel your mind's image with your eyes closed. Li Shang closed his eyes at her words. A sword appeared in his mind. He controlled the closure of the magic circuits, and the faint blue light disappeared. You possess five magic attributes, earth, water, fire, wind, and void. Astati continued, without a doubt, you are a magical genius, so being specially admitted is only natural. Li Shang thought of his A-level talent magic wand. There was no doubt that this was its manifestation. For more specific details, Wait until you arrive at the clock tower, and I will explain it to you in detail. Astati took out a Nokia and handed it to him, saying, It's the latest model. Contact me after everything is ready. Host joins the clock tower, activating the space time node. Open the main world simulation, you can save the game, and return to the save point after death. You can store up to five time nodes in the save. Open the host's attribute panel. Li Shang took the Nokia and couldn't help but smile, saying, Okay. Archiving the main world meant that Li Shang could act without restraint. As long as he didn't archive to a dead end. But with five saves, the chance of a dead end was small. Fate, stay night was not safe. This world was in a mysterious state of decline, or more commonly known as the end of an era. The magical energy in the air was very thin, and resources were also scarce. Many magicians had resorted to desperate measures as a result. For example, using their lives to refine magical energy. In addition to that, there were even more dangerous things. The hidden vampire species. 
For Li Shang to enter the field of magicians as an ordinary person was already a very rare occurrence. It was like lazily delivering oneself to the mouth of a wolf. But now, with the function of archiving, he no longer needed to worry. Panel. Li Shang silently recited in his mind. A semi transparent screen appeared in his line of sight. Name Li Shang. Occupation Magician, inactive. Attributes Strength E, 1. Endurance E, 1. Agility E, 1. Magic E, 1. Luck X. Magical circuits 3. Magical attributes Earth, water, fire, wind, void. Note 1 represents the level of a normal person. X represents an exception, and the number cannot be displayed. Very ordinary attributes, nothing unexpected. Even Li Shang could understand the meaning of Luck X. Having unlimited chances to restart, Luck was already maxed out. Li Shang took out his Nokia phone and played with it, finding it quite boring. He didn't know how long it would be until he could use a touchscreen smartphone. Hum. Li Shang stopped in his tracks. The door to his rented house was wide open. A thief? Li Shang felt a bit strange, because this guy was quite bold, not even bothering to close the door. He quietly approached the window and saw the true face of the thief through the glass. A hidden fox. Hum, not joking, it really was a hidden fox. And it was a hidden fox walking upright. It rummaged through the refrigerator and complained, why is there no rabbit meat? Li Shang took a cold breath, making his contribution to global warming. Why would anyone eat such a cute rabbit? Ah. Uh, no, this hidden fox can actually speak. He suddenly thought of the C-rank pet reward from the simulator. After ruling out all the wrong answers, only one truth remained. Li Shang knocked on the door. The hidden fox turned around, propping its elbow against the refrigerator, and said, Human, the only surviving species under the human category, primate order. Judging from your appearance, you're probably a high school student. Li Shang was at a loss for words. He felt that there were too many loopholes. Are you my pet? No, strictly speaking, there is no contract between you and me. The hidden fox opened its eyes, as if squinting, but you did summon me. Li Shang remembered the hidden fox emoji pack on his phone from his previous life. What can you do? A C rank should be quite useful, theoretically. I have an appraisal skill. How did this feel so familiar? Were you the fox director from that popular appraisal video on the internet in your previous life? But this skill did sound good. Li Shang would make use of it. For example, appraising holy relics. The so called holy relics were the artifacts left behind by famous historical figures. The most important thing was to participate in the Holy Grail War, which required summoning a servant related to the holy relic. After learning that the simulator had an archiving function, Li Shang planned to participate in the Fifth Holy Grail War in Fuyuki City. After all, he has many servants he wants to summon. Ahem, they are all his wives. For example, Artoria, Nero, Morgan, and Kurozuka. Can other people see you? Li Shang remembered another crucial question. I can. The nine tailed fox understood the trouble that a talking pet could cause, but except in front of you, I pretend to be an ordinary fox. Are you a protected species? I'm a second class one. The nine tailed fox raised its little paw, looking quite proud. This is really too cruel. Li Shang scratched his head. You have to stay at home and not go anywhere, understand? The nine tailed fox immediately showed a disdainful expression, looking very indifferent. In a few days, I'll take you to London, and then you can come out and wander around. There was no way, Li Shang was a law abiding citizen, so he asked, Besides appraisal, can you do that? He immediately made a few moves with his nunchaku. All right, you don't have to show off your half assed skills. One day, when I buy a pair of nunchaku, I'll show you a thing or two. The nine-tailed fox waved its little paw and said, I want to eat rabbit meat. No problem, I'll go buy some. Li Shang couldn't help but laugh, you've come to the right place, our city is famous for raising rabbits, not a single rabbit can leave alive. He went out and bought a few pounds of rabbit meat, as well as a toy sword. It was still a long way until the next simulation. During this time, Li Shang took the opportunity to familiarize himself with Uchiha swordsmanship. Actually, it was just to regain muscle memory. It was really sorry to have exchanged for such a terrible modern young body. What's your name? I can't just call you Nine Tailed Fox, right? Li Shang practiced swordsmanship in the corner of the living room. The Nine Tailed Fox ate cold rabbit while watching TV. It was watching the popular TV series, The Heaven Sword and Dragon Saber. 
Nick. Oh. Li Shang continued to sweat. Compared to Uchiha Lang, his body was really average and needed more time. But on the third day, his Nokia phone rang, Junior. It was Astati's voice. No surprises. After all, she was the only magician who had his phone number. Nothing. I just wanted to ask what kind of transportation you want to take back to London, I'll arrange it in advance. I have no preference, anything is fine. How about taking a boat? It will take about 20 days to get to London, and I can teach you some basic magician knowledge. Estati suggested. Why? Li Shang was a little puzzled. This senior sister was being a bit too nice to him, which made people worry. A boy had to protect himself when he was outside. Especially in the type moon world, who knows when he would wake up at a magician's ritual. Because the teacher I recommended to you is my teacher, in other words, you should call me senior sister. Estati explained. The teacher is out on business and won't be back at the clock tower for a month, so she asked me to teach you for a while. I see. Li Shang breathed a sigh of relief. If what Estati said was true, then she was indeed someone worth befriending. In 20 days, he could not only learn magician knowledge, but also have another simulation and gain new talents. Then let's leave today. Li Shang wasn't prepared anyway. He had delayed for a few days because he wanted to practice swordsmanship, but now that he had this opportunity, there was no need to wait. Okay. Estati hung up the phone. Half an hour later, Li Shang heard a knock on the door. So fast? He was a little surprised to see Estati. She was dressed differently from yesterday's red windbreaker, wearing a dress instead. Still showing off her slender legs, but instead of black stockings, she wore blue ankle socks. Oh, an unknown creature. Nick suddenly appeared. A talking hidden fox. Astarte showed no surprise on her face and calmly said, in a world where fantasies are almost extinct, if you were to appear in front of other magicians, there would only be one outcome, being torn apart alive. Nick took a few steps back and said, I didn't say anything just now, and you didn't hear anything. It sensed an unprecedented terror from the girl in front of it. Li Shang was troubled, wondering how to explain Nick's origin. But Astarte seemed uninterested and said, Pack up your things, we'll take a plane to the magic city later. After saying that, she casually took off her sandals and sat on the sofa in the living room, picking up the remote control. The TV was playing the drama, Love Across Time. Li Shang glanced at it and saw Astarte's fair toes peeking out from her socks. They were very small and cute. He quickly turned his head, picked up Nick, and entered the room, instructing, Don't speak casually next time, those magicians are really ruthless. Seeing it nod, he asked, What do you mean by calling her an unknown creature? Well, it means that she is incredibly powerful, and I can't figure out her true abilities, Nick paused and replied. I see. Li Shang believed him and smiled, saying, I thought you meant she wasn't human. Astarte, after all, was a magician, and there was no reason for her true nature to be easily seen through. He put down Nick, packed his clean clothes into a suitcase, and returned to the living room, where he thought of another question. Do we need to arrange pet transportation? No need. Astarte shook her head. It wasn't until they arrived at the airport that Li Shang understood what she meant. It was actually a private plane, Big Sister. As the cabin door opened, accompanied by cheerful voices, a white figure rushed towards Astarte. But she pressed her index finger against her forehead. The girl waved her hands unwillingly a few times but couldn't touch her, so she had to give up in the end. Li Shang looked up. The girl was wearing a white Lolita dress, pink twin tails, and a fancy star-shaped eye mask on her right eye. Although she was pretty, her outfit seemed too much like a two-dimensional character. Student of the Mineral Science Department, Yvette L. Layman, you can call her Yvette. So you're this year's special admission, Li Shang? Yvette turned her blue eyes and noticed the extra boy. Her eyes instantly lit up, and she asked, Little handsome guy, do you have a girlfriend? It's okay if you do. Do you mind having multiple lovers? But before Li Shang could answer, Astarte pulled her ponytail and went to the cockpit. Put away your frivolous act. Tisk, it seems like Big Sister really values him. Yvette took off her eye mask, revealing a green peacock stone. Do you want to provoke me with your magic eye in front of me? Astarte directly knocked her on the head and said, He is my junior brother. To put it simply, a magic eye is a special equipment for magicians, with independent magic circuits and effects. Yvette's eye was an ordinary magic eye transformed from a gem. It could be used to peek into others' emotions. Magic eyes of higher levels are usually innate, possessing unimaginable power. For example, 
Medusa's petrifying magic eye or the direct death magic eye of the two-form ritual. Yvette widened her eyes in shock and blurted out, to think that the witch took a liking to such an unlucky and pitiful little guy. What did you say? Astarte glanced at her. Yvette shrank her neck in fear. I'll go fly the plane. She turned around and sat in the pilot's seat. The reason Astarte called her over was because she had the talent of an experienced driver. Whether it was a plane or a cruise ship, she was very skilled. You can sit wherever you want. Astarte returned to the cabin and said, but remember to fasten your seatbelt. After arriving in the magic city, the three of them went to the port. The Ocean Phantom, built by the famous Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, is approximately 362 meters long and 72 meters high. It has facilities such as a ballroom, ice rink, gym, cinema, and martial arts arena. A vet jumped around and introduced, this is one of the largest cruise ships in the world. After saying that, she somehow took out a camera and handed it to Li Shang, asking, Sony F828, the latest model that hasn't been released yet, can you take a picture for me? Yvette stood by the shore, showing a bright smile, and at the same time, raised her arm and made a peace sign. Li Shang suddenly realized that both of them were rich women among rich women. Especially a study. Sister, do you want to take a photo? Yvette excitedly waved at a study, but noticed her expression and quickly put away the camera. The three of them boarded the ship. Yvette quickly ran to the cockpit. You stay in this room. Astati pointed to the door with the number 303. They were currently on the third floor of the cruise ship. I live next door, you can call me if you need anything. Okay. Li Shang opened the door and was immediately surprised. The room was extremely luxurious, exuding an air of wealth everywhere. He had only seen it on TV before. Tisk, it seems like my senior sister is using the magic of money, not the magic of gems. Li Shang put his luggage aside lay on the soft bed, and couldn't help but comment. The extravagance was inhumane. Who could withstand this kind of lifestyle? Nick also jumped onto the bed, bounced a few times, and said, the bed is nice. After a while, there was a knock on the door. Astati handed the ten books in her hand to Li Shang and said, these are the textbooks for the first two years of the basic subjects. Thank you, senior sister. Li Shang readily changed his way of addressing her and asked, are there any weapons on the ship? like swords? If you're interested in combat, the clock tower offers specialized combat courses, and any student can sign up. Astati shook her head and said, but traditional magicians have always looked down on close combat. Magicians consider themselves nobles and prefer elegant battles. With the help of magical workshops and magical attire, they can easily defeat enemies while chatting and laughing. Instead of using fists, axes, swords, and other weapons, which would be too embarrassing. In addition, they also dislike modern technology. Li Shang explained, because I'm just an ordinary person now, I want to use them for self-defense. There is an armory on the first floor, but it's meaningless to practice on your own. Astati smiled and said, if you want to learn, come to the martial arts hall tomorrow and find me, it's also on the first floor. Li Shang suddenly felt that his senior sister was like Doraemon, knowing a little bit of everything. When he arrived at the armory, he couldn't help but be amazed. There really were all kinds of weapons. In addition to the common swords and staffs, there were also axes, spears, whips, and more. Li Shang only took a samurai sword and a pair of nunchucks. Back in the room, Nick put on a serious face and performed a scene of a hidden fox using nunchucks to attack. Li Shang was defeated miserably. He estimated that Nick's nunchuck skills were at least at the level of a chunin. Because he had just switched bodies, Li Shang hadn't gotten used to Uchiha swordsmanship yet so it was normal for him to lose. Night fell. Before going to sleep, Li Shang saved his progress. Half asleep, he heard Nick's voice. Wow, there really is a water monkey. This little knife can really stab your butt. I'm impressed. Li Shang subconsciously looked over. There was a puddle of water in front of the window. A completely soaked monkey was staring at him. Its eyes were very lively, making Li Shang feel like it was a person, not a monkey. In the next moment, he shivered suddenly, accompanied by a gust of cold wind, before he could react. A claw, flickering with a faint black light, reached towards him. Blood splattered. You have died. Please choose a save file. You have chosen the most recent save file, returning immediately. Evaluation. Monkey stealing peaches truly lives up to its reputation as the strongest move. Reward. None. Li Shang abruptly opened his eyes. Li Shang glanced at the clock on the wall, 
it was nine o'clock in the evening. There was still some time before the attack of the water monkey. Although he was a bit drowsy at the time, he still noticed something was off. For example, the eyes and movements were more human-like. Li Shang got up and put his katana under the covers. He was certain that it was the work of a magician. The reason being that the cruise ship was a study's personal item. As a magician, she would definitely leave behind some kind of barrier or warning magic. Li Shang recalled the previous incident of the monkey stealing peaches, it was fast, but within his acceptable range. And he felt that its movements were not smooth enough. This feeling was the same as when he left the ninja world and returned to his own body. This once again proved that the water monkey was being controlled by someone. I should be able to kill it. Li Shang thought seriously for a few seconds and said. He was not the kind of person who sought help when faced with difficulties. Besides, with the simulator, he couldn't possibly fail. Nick. Li Shang nudged the nearby hidden fox. Although Nick had sensed the arrival of the water monkey earlier, he didn't have time to react. So Li Shang planned to give it an early warning. It had identification skills, so there might be some surprises. Not sleeping in the middle of the night, are you trying to ascend to heaven? Nick grumbled with sleepy eyes. Wait, there's a water monkey. Where, where? Nick jumped up energetically, asking, where is the water monkey? Was the hidden fox so obsessed with the water monkey? Li Shang pointed to the window and said, it hasn't arrived yet. Nick immediately understood, lay back down to rest, but took out his nunchaku. Li Shang looked around and asked, where was your nunchaku stored before? Oh, it's my other skill, storage space, Nick explained. You actually have such a good thing. It can't hold much, just the size of a bedside table, 20 centimeters high. That's already pretty good. Li Shang was a bit envious. Space was a rare skill no matter where it was. But fortunately, Nick's things were his things. He also had this storage space. After the conversation ended, Li Shang and the hidden fox closed their eyes and pretended to sleep. It was unknown how long had passed when Li Shang heard the sound of water droplets falling on the ground. Then he felt a cold wind blowing. It should be because the water monkey had opened the window. Li Shang continued to pretend to sleep. The sound of footsteps gradually approached. Although he had lost the support of chakra, his ability to locate by sound was still there. Estimating the distance, Li Shang lifted the bedsheet without hesitation and threw it at the water monkey as a prop to block its vision. At the same time, with his right hand at the fastest speed, he stabbed the katana out. The weapons collected by Istadi might not be divine weapons, but they were definitely top notch. The katana almost pierced through the water monkey's back without any obstruction. Piercing it through the intestines, but there was no scream. Li Zhang's expression froze, and he let go of the katana and jumped back. A faint green substance, like flowing water, surged towards the blade, instantly turning into molten iron. Ha! The nunchaku in Nick's hand swung, leaving only afterimages. In an instant, it struck the water monkey's head. Well done. Li Shang picked up his backup weapon, a fruit knife on the fruit plate, and threw it directly. The fruit knife was like a shuriken, accurately hitting the water monkey's heart. Fresh red blood gushed out. The water monkey's movements became momentarily sluggish. Seeing this, Nick's eyes gleamed, and he smashed the nunchaku down. The overwhelmingly powerful blow made the water monkey completely lose consciousness. An invisible fluctuation spread. The water monkey twitched twice and then stopped moving. Just then, the door opened, and a statty appeared. She was wearing loose pink pajamas, with her long hair in a mess. It indicates that she left in a hurry. Are you guys okay? I sensed abnormal souls. A statty examined Li Shang with her light golden eyes. Nick clearly felt ignored. We're fine. Li Shang looked at the water monkey. At this moment, it looked ordinary, like an ordinary monkey in a zoo. Short tailed monkey, a type of macaque, larger in size, usually over 50 centimeters tall, but with a short tail. Nick looked disappointed and said, This can't be the water monkey, and it can't have the ability to fuse with a sword like before. Astati squatted down, took out a green gemstone, and crushed it into powder. Gradually, a human figure appeared on the body of the short tailed monkey. Methods of the Necromancy Department. Astati said expressionlessly, no wonder it was able to bypass my barrier. It seems that my power is still insufficient. Li Shang recalled the information in the records. The necromancy department mainly consists of two magical systems. One is necromancy, manipulating and using spirits. 
The so-called spirits are the souls left behind by humans or special animals and plants after death for various reasons. The legendary ruler of the necromancy department, Eurifus, even has an army of evil spirits. The other is summoning magic, as the name suggests, summoning powerful beings. For example, summoning heroic spirits that have transcended human existence after death through rituals, and enslaving and commanding them, as called a servant. But the heroic spirits summoned by magicians are just copies and do not have personalities. Only in the Holy Grail War in Fuyuki City, with the power of the Holy Grail, can servants with personalities and power be summoned. And the water monkey in front of them is obviously the work of necromancy. By trapping a certain spirit in the body of a short-tailed monkey, it can kill invisibly under remote control. And it is difficult to trace back to the whereabouts of the magician. It seems that someone doesn't welcome me. The first person Li Shang thought of was Weber. After all, he took away the position of the Elmero family. But Weber doesn't seem like the kind of person who would do such a thing. Rest, I will investigate. Astati took out a ruby, sealed the body of the water monkey, and said, There is no absolute crime in the world of magicians. Li Shang nodded. His current level is limited, and he can't find out anything, so it's better to leave it to Astati. Although they have only been together for a short time, he can tell that his senior sister is an extremely proud person. Causing trouble on her ship is undoubtedly offending her. Astati closed the door and looked at the number 303 on the door. She spread her hand, and a diamond floated up. Immediately, it turned into invisible ripples and disappeared. The next day, Li Shang came to the martial arts hall, planning to receive guidance from his senior sister. Although he learned a lot of physical techniques in Konoha, there should be no problem in understanding the fighting skills of magicians. There are many courses in the clock tower, but I only learned two. Astati wore a white training suit, and her hair was fixed with a black diamond-shaped headband. She looked like a cold and beautiful girl from the student council. The eight extremities fist in the swordsmanship, Yagayu Shinei Eight Ryu. The former is from Li Shuwen, and the latter is from Yagayu Daimonji. Do you want to learn? I want to learn. Li Shang answered without hesitation. Not learning would be foolish. Li Shuwen and Yagayu Daimonji are both servants in FGO. They are quite powerful, but he was also a little puzzled. Both the Eight Extremities Fist and Yagayu Shinei Ryu have many lineages. Why did Astati only mention Li Shuwen and Yagayu Daimonji? Could it be that she really learned from them? Li Shang didn't believe it. Both of them have been dead for many years. Because of his photographic memory talent, Li Shang learned quickly. Although the process was quite painful, four days passed in the blink of an eye, and Li Zhang's cheat system came back online. Life Unlimited Simulator Loading. Loading complete. Our slogan is to create miracles with heart and be happy even without money. Current world. Hokage Ninja. Related event. Konoha Collapse Plan. Simulation begins. Age 0, you were born in Kirigakure, belonging to the Kagura clan, named Kagura Mochizuki. Age 6, you were captured by Orochimaru for research and died in an experiment. This world simulation has ended. Review. The first step of a genius often ends in premature death. Reward. Two simulation coins, current balance, 10b, one random talent, 99% chance of getting garbage. Li Zhang's biggest complaint is not dying at the hands of Orochimaru, but rather why the beginning of the Leaf Village's collapse plan took place in Kirigakure. In other words, if he wants to change his fate, he must participate in the Chunin exam. But fortunately, he has Uchiha Lang's disguise, so he can manipulate things once he arrives in Konoha. Therefore, the most urgent matter is how to survive in Kirigakure. It's no joke within the bloody mist before Terumi Mei takes the stage. Li Shang ponders for a moment and looks at the newly acquired talent. Water Monkey, E rank, you have excellent water affinity and are difficult to drown. It's not very useful for a ninja, but it's quite useful in the main world. If he encounters another attack from the Water Monkey a few days ago, he can jump into the sea to save his life. Li Shang picks up the book, Dai Yuan Studies, from the bedside table. As the foundation of a magician's knowledge, Dai Yuan Studies is undoubtedly the most important book. Dai Yuan refers to the magic power in the atmosphere. In contrast, Shao Yuan refers to the magic power within the magician's body. But in modern times, Dai Yuan has become scarce. Only a few places still maintain decent magic power, such as the clock tower. A night passes without any words. Li Shang doesn't rush to do another simulation. After all, there is plenty of time. He opens the door and finds a steady, 
wearing a black off-the-shoulder t-shirt with a small vest, standing outside the door. Her top reveals her slender waist and flat abdomen. There is no excess fat, but rather a sense of strength. Aren't we going to the martial arts hall today? Li Shang asks when he sees that she is not wearing training clothes. Let's eat first, and then I'll teach you magic, a study turns around and walks towards the restaurant. Li Zhang's eyes light up. Is it finally time for real combat? Breakfast consists of lean meat and preserved egg congee and five small steamed buns. Very Chinese. Li Shang was initially worried about the so-called British cuisine. After all, its reputation precedes it and is quite intimidating. But in London, it's probably hard to avoid. He can only hope that the clock tower is considerate enough to provide different meals for students, rather than just fish and chips. A stati glances at him, seemingly guessing what he's thinking, and says, If you want to eat Chinese food, then joining my teacher's school is your best choice, because she and you come from the same place, and you can come over for a meal whenever you want. The same place? Li Shang shows a curious expression. He doesn't remember any magician from the clock tower who specializes in Eastern magic. Because according to the setting, Western and Eastern magic are completely different systems. Yes, my teacher will surprise you, a study smiles and doesn't elaborate further. Li Shang can only suppress his curiosity and look forward to the so-called surprise. After breakfast, the two of them arrive at an empty training room. There are barriers all around, so don't worry about magic going out of control. A study takes out a red gem and says, magic can be divided into ancient magic and modern magic. However, due to the decline of Daiyuan, ancient magic is difficult to reproduce its power, so what we learn is modern magic. Li Shang nods. He has read relevant introductions in the textbook. It's a very simple distinction. Modern magic mainly uses one's own magic power, while ancient magic uses the magic power in the atmosphere. The difference in power between the two is like night and day. Magicians who use ancient magic can leave their names in history as heroic spirits. Like Medea. The magician from the ancient times was summoned as a caster servant in the Fifth Holy Grail War. Modern magic doesn't have so-called rankings. Astati threw a ruby to Li Shang and said, you can use syllables as rankings. The longer the syllable, the more powerful it is. For example, the yin chi bullet I'm about to teach you, it originates from an ancient curse in the Nordic region and has only one syllable. The process of casting magic is somewhat similar to ninjutsu, but the hand seals are replaced with chanting. Li Shang held the ruby in his left hand and extended his right hand. Because he had just opened his magic circuit, his magical power was insufficient and he could only rely on the magical power stored in the gem. The magic circuit gradually lit up. Li Shang uttered a syllable. A black, bullet-like oval-shaped magical energy suddenly flew out from his fingertips. It quickly made contact with the wall. The originally invisible barrier revealed a faint red light. Li Zhang's magic instantly dissipated. To be able to successfully cast it on the first try, your talent is enough to rank among the top 100 in the clock tower. Astati praised him generously. This sentence sounds familiar. It seems to be used to evaluate Tasaka Rin. Li Shang glanced at the gem in his hand, which was only slightly dimmed but not shattered. It indicates that his Yin Qi bullet is indeed weak. According to the original work, the yin chi bullet is a curse that can lower a person's physical functions, but if the magical density is high enough, it can produce a bullet-like effect. Although increasing magical output density should not be a consideration for a beginner, with senior sister's gems, he can give it a try. Sister, can you give me more gems? Li Shang asked somewhat embarrassedly. In a sense, he was living off a rich woman. Frequent use of the magic circuit will have serious consequences. With your current level, you can only use it 20 times at most, and you won't be able to bear it. Astati took out five rubies and said, after using them all, continue studying the knowledge of a magician. Thank you, sister. Li Shang felt quite lucky. The sect was free from internal strife and was quite harmonious. It seems that his luck X is not just limited to the simulator. In the afternoon, Li Shang realized that he had underestimated the pain caused by the magic circuit. He felt as if his right arm was being continuously burned by flames. It was a scorching pain. Li Shang thought for a moment, not in the mood to read, and turned on the simulator. Simulation start. Age zero, you were born into the ordinary ninja clan of Kirigakure, and your father named you San Madero. Age one, due to your physical condition, you could only be taken care of by others. Age two, you showed extraordinary intelligence, and your father began teaching you the basics of ninjutsu. Age 3, 
you were admitted to the ninja school ahead of schedule and became a somewhat famous prodigy. Age 4, you and Higurashi Mizuki were known as the twin stars of the ninja school and were hailed as the next generation of the seven ninja swordsmen. Age 5, Orochimaru captured you and Higurashi Mizuki in Otogakure. Higurashi Mizuki was used for experiments, while you were forced to become Orochimaru's vessel and were beaten to death in the battle for a spot. End of this world simulation. Evaluation. Being too famous is not a good thing. Reward. Two simulation coins, current balance, 11b, one random talent, 99% chance of getting trash. I have a grudge with Uchiha Itachi from the previous event, and now I have a grudge with Orochimaru. Li Shang shrugged. Next time, either avoid Orochimaru's preference for collecting geniuses or try to persuade Orochimaru with words. But considering the issue of the highest evaluation, he would definitely choose the latter. So, should the ninja world play with words? However, Orochimaru is harder to persuade than the young Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi. A single wrong word could lead to death. Indomitable spirit, D rank. Enter the next simulation, randomly lose an organ, but as a cost, you can carry two D rank or E rank talents. Randomly lose an organ. Li Shang scratched his head. There are some organs that absolutely cannot be lost. This talent, indomitable spirit, comes from the reader master of Saint Yang Fish. Li Shang held his right arm, relieving the pain caused by the magic circuit. Today, he learned the second magic, projection. Using magic to materialize objects that have existed in reality. But it's just superficial, a kind of magic with extremely low efficiency. Most magicians don't know how to use it, except for the protagonist, Emi Yashuru, who cheats. But his projection magic can't be called projection magic, it's a byproduct of his innate bounded field, unlimited blade works. It allows him to project weapons that closely resemble the original sword concept. The bounded field, classified as a forbidden spell by the magic association, is a powerful magic that can rewrite reality. It is extremely rare and can only be created after years of accumulation. And it is almost impossible for outsiders to learn. Li Shang returned to his room and turned on the simulator. This time, he wanted to compete with Orochimaru in terms of eloquence. Simulation begins. Age 0, you were born into the ordinary ninja clan of Kirigakure, and your father named you Suika Taro. Age 3, you joined the ninja school. Age 4, you defeated Hazuka Suigetsu and became the most outstanding student in the ninja school. Age 5, you met Orochimaru and caught his attention with your knowledge of past lives. That your mediocre skills made Orochimaru suspect your origins and he tortured you for information. Unable to bear the humiliation, you chose death. Simulation in this world ends. Evaluation. Knowledge is power. Reward. Two simulation coins, current balance. 12b, one random talent, 99% chance of getting trash. Orochimaru is really difficult to deal with. Li Shang knew he had fallen into the trap of arrogance. The knowledge he had acquired was indeed advanced. But Orochimaru was too smart and quickly absorbed this knowledge, wanting more. And Li Shang was exposed. Serpent tongue, E rank. You can speak the language of snakes and communicate with them. Is this talent supposed to take me to the world of Harry Potter? Li Shang couldn't help but shake his head, because it was useless in the ninja world. The snakes in Ryuchi Cave could speak human language. Could it be that serpent tongue increased the chance of learning sage mode? Li Shang woke Nick up and went to the restaurant for breakfast. He chose the classic combination of soy milk and fried dough sticks. Li Shang. A frivolous tone. It was the pink twin tailed girl, Yvette. Hello, Yvette. Li Shang maintained a polite smile. A girl who clamored to be your mistress was undoubtedly dangerous. He never believed that good things would fall from the sky. Ah, your tone is so unfamiliar, it hurts my heart. Yvette said, and her body leaned towards his shoulder. Li Shang immediately changed his position. It's been a long time since I've seen such an honest boy like you. Yvette missed and wasn't angry at all. She said, based on your performance, I believe you have a bright future in the clock tower. So you came here to praise me? Li Shang took a bite of the fried dough stick and sarcastically said, Are all magicians as leisurely as you? Of course not. Yvette blinked, Let me reintroduce myself. I am the daughter of the prestigious Mage Eye family, Layman. If you want to know more about Mage Eyes in the future, you can always find me. Indeed, she was another rich lowly. Every Mage Eye was invaluable, not to mention a magical family engaged in processing and selling Mage Eyes. 
Li Shang finally remembered who Yvette was. In the original plot, she was a student of the mineralogy department and later became a spy in the modern magic department. My greatest wish is to become the monarch, Elmer Oe, who is Weber's mistress. Now let's talk about business. Yvette took out a document and said, I fought hard to get this opportunity from the boss, so don't let her down. It's about the investigation of the water monkey. Li Shang could probably guess how Yvette got it. As for the second half of the sentence, he pretended not to hear it. But there was no harm in getting to know Yvette. In the plot of Magic Eye Train, her power might come in handy. Thank you. Li Shang finished breakfast quickly, took the documents, and returned to his room. The investigation was clearly stated. Although it didn't specify a particular magician, a study found traces of their activities on the shore. Through her methods, it was determined that it was the work of the Department of Spirit Descending and Prayer Theology. There were many magic groups in the clock tower. They were divided into two categories, student interest clubs and groups formed by magicians for a certain purpose. The goal of the Prayer Theology Society was only one, the ritual of descending spirits. And this was also the most interesting and daring magic topic of the Department of Spirit Descending. How do modern magicians summon spirits? The clock tower, as a university-like institution, had 12 famous magic topics. Similar to the Millennium Prize problems in the mathematics world of the previous life. Any magician who could solve them would receive unimaginable honor and rewards. Summon spirits using me? Li Zhang's face turned slightly cold. He would remember this grudge in his little notebook. Regardless of the reason, he had to give something in return. But the immediate priority was to improve his strength. Training in eight extremes fist and kendo in the morning, practicing magic in the afternoon, and simulations at night. A packed schedule. Simulation begins. Age zero, you were born into the ordinary ninja clan of Kirigakure, and your mother named Yu Zhenhong. Age one, encountered enemies, and the entire family was wiped out. End of simulation in this world. Evaluation. Becoming a Hokage ninja is just a game of luck. Reward. Two simulation coins, current balance. 13b, and a random attribute point. Oh, attribute points? Li Shang was somewhat surprised. He didn't expect to gain such a reward. You have gained one point in magical attribute. The attribute panel has been updated. Please check it yourself. Li Shang reached out and activated the magic circuit. He vaguely felt that his magical power had increased by about twice. The reason it was vague was that he originally had very little magical power. Doubling it was not that significant but it gave him great hope. As long as he continued to simulate, Li Zhang's attribute panel would surpass that of a servant, which was not just a dream. By then, he could also fight with a servant like Emma Yashuru. Li Shang pressed his forehead, closed his eyes again, and started a new simulation. Oh right, I forgot to use my talent. Retaining memories, eloquence, photographic memory, theater general, snake-like voice. He didn't bring in a rank talent magic wand because he found in his previous attempts that it was not useful for ninjutsu. And although the D-rank talent, Indomitable Spirit, allowed him to carry two more, he had obtained too few talents at the moment, so it was not necessary to use it. Give me a bloodline limit ninja from the Hazuka clan. After using the talent of the theater general, Li Shang heard the slogan of the simulator in his ears. Simulation begins. Age zero. You were born into the Hazuka clan of Kirigakure, and your mother named you Hazuki. Age 3, you joined the ninja school ahead of time. Age 4, you became the genius of the ninja school, and through this, you obtained relevant information about medical ninjutsu from the clan. Age 6, you defeated your cousin Hazuka Mizuki, who challenged you, and gained great fame. Age 7, you met Terumi Mei. With your silver tongue and talent, you became her disciple and learned about the abnormality of the Mizukage. Li Shang participated in a simulation called Higarashi Hamezuki, which sounded like a female name but was actually a young boy. He asked his mother, who said that she dreamt of a red moon on the day she got pregnant. Fortunately, it was just a dream and the red moon didn't actually appear. Otherwise, it would have been troublesome. Who knows what kind of scene would have unfolded with a whole family suffering from a mental illness. Hamezuki. A boy with blue short hair and carrying giant swords rushed into the room, gasping for breath, and said, Terumi Mei Sama wants you to come. Chojuro, what happened? Li Shang calmly stood up. Although Terumi Mei hadn't officially taken office as Mizukage yet, she was already considered the next Mizukage. Only Li Shang knew that Chojuro would also become Mizukage in the future. But he would be the weakest Mizukage. To put it simply, Chojuro, 
You're so embarrassing, you should just quit. Somebody got injured. Oh. Li Shang wasn't surprised. He became Tarumi Mei's apprentice not only because he was good at speaking, talented, and good looking, but also because he knew medical ninjutsu. Due to the constant bloodshed in Kirigakure, everyone understood one thing. Learning medicine couldn't save Kirigakure. Except for a few exceptions like Tsunade, medical ninjas weren't good at combat. In the high pressure situation of Kirigakure, it was as good as sending them to their deaths. Therefore, medical ninjas were quite rare, and Li Zhang's path to becoming a medical ninja was smooth. Because he had stayed in Konoha, although he had changed bodies, his memories remained. Plus, he had developed excellent chakra control over several lifetimes. In Tarumi Mei's eyes, Li Shang was truly a gift from nature. Not only was he skilled in water style ninjutsu, but he was also a rare medical ninja. Li Shang followed Chojuro to Tarumi Mei's residence. In addition to Tarumi Mei, there was also Ao. Ao, a Jonin from Kirigakure, was known as the White Eye Killer. Under his eye patch was the Byakugan of the Hyuga clan, which had been exiled. Hamezuki, can you see if he can be saved? Tarumi Mei pointed to the ninja lying on the bed. Li Shang smelled the scent of blood and burnt flesh. Obviously, the injuries were caused by fire style ninjutsu. Recalling what he had heard from Ao recently about Mizuka Jigura's abnormality, he could guess who was responsible. Uchiha Obito. According to Kirigakure's medical standards, this ninja could only receive basic treatment. No hope. Just wait for death. Goodbye. It's not that Li Shang was boasting about Konoha, but in terms of medical skills, Konoha was indeed in a league of its own. In the original work, Sakura's shining moment was detoxifying Konkuro. It could be said that she surpassed the entire Sanagakure, including renowned strong individuals like Chiyo. Kirigakure's situation was even worse than Sanagakure, so it was naturally impossible for them to develop advanced medical skills. Li Shang extended his hands, healing Jutsu. Green chakra appeared. He pressed his hands on the burned area, and the blackened flesh was immediately replaced. Seeing this, Tarumi Mei flicked her hair and smiled. She looked at Li Shang and made a decision in her heart. Perhaps she should let him enter the center of power ahead of time. Kirigakure was truly lacking in talent. Due to the tradition of allowing killings and disliking Kekei Jenkei, with the demise of the Yoruichi clan, there were hardly any major ninja clans left. Currently, the only clan that barely resembled a ninja clan was the Higarashi clan. And the renowned seven ninja swordsmen of the mist were also in a pitiful state. The first generation of the seven ninja swordsmen was kicked into becoming the auspicious three treasures by a leaf village genin. The second generation died, escaped, and betrayed. In the third generation, things became even worse, with only Chojuro and Kagura Karatachi remaining. Currently, Kagura Karatachi is only four years old, so Li Zhang's appearance brings great joy to Tarumi Mei. Especially since he is her disciple. Unlike Hoshigaki Kisame, who is practically a known traitor, always following the controlled Mizukage. Resting for a while will restore you to normal. Li Shang dissipated his chakra and wiped the sweat from his forehead. One advantage he has in this world is being born into the Karatachi clan. He naturally has more chakra than others. You should stay and listen to what he has to say, Tarumi Mei nodded and said. All right, he should wake up soon, Li Shang immediately understood her meaning. It has to be said that this terrible timing in Kirigakure has given him a great opportunity. If he were in Konoha, even as a Hokage's disciple, he would have to demonstrate extraordinary strength to enter the center of power. At least it would be impossible at the age of seven. After a few minutes, the Anbu ninja on the bed woke up. He shook his head, took note of the situation around him, and quickly regained his composure. No need to get up, just tell us what you found out, Tarumi Mei waved her hand and said. Our Anbu team infiltrated the Mizukage's office and encountered two mysterious individuals. In the end, I was the only one who managed to escape. The Ambu Ninja took a deep breath and said, the three of them were wearing the same uniform, with a black cloak embroidered with a red cloud. So, it's not just one person, but an organization, Tarumi Mei frowned. The situation was becoming more troublesome. A while ago, Ao used his Byakugan to detect traces of Genjutsu on Mizuka Jigura. It shocked her greatly. But at the same time, it made sense and explained why Mizukage's personality had changed so drastically. What about their identities? Tarumi Mei continued to ask. One of them is Hoshigaki Kisame, and the other two, I've never seen before. One wears a mask and uses fire style, while the other uses snake-related secret techniques. Snake? 
Terumi Mei had a bad feeling in her heart. She took out a scroll and asked, Is it him? That's right, it's him. The Anbu ninja nodded heavily. Terumi Mei sama, who is he? You didn't participate in the Great Ninja War, so you wouldn't know him. It's normal, Terumi Mei sighed and said, One of the Konoha Sanin, Orochimaru, is now a rogue ninja. The organization that Orochimaru joined. Terumi Mei hesitated, almost blurting out an expletive. Li Shang had a similar feeling. He tasted the consequences of his actions. Orochimaru didn't betray Akatsuki like in the original story, and the only reason could be that Uchiha Itachi was still in Konoha. The plot had changed. Li Shang suddenly realized that it would be extremely difficult for him to participate in the Chunin exams. Obito wouldn't be so kind as to let him go to Konoha for the exams. So his hope lay with Terumi Mei. Of course, there was another option, to join if he couldn't beat them. The original intention of Li Shang learning medical ninjutsu was to make Orochimaru see his value. Not to be used as an experiment or a vessel. Referring to Yukushi Kabuto, it was clear that an excellent medical ninja could make Orochimaru show mercy. Even if we release Mizukage from the Genjutsu control, it will still be difficult to defeat those three. Terumi Mei rubbed her temples, feeling a headache. Kirigakure's strong individuals were too scarce. But if the problem with Mizukage wasn't resolved, the village would have no future.